Hey, here today. Hey, hey, ho, ho. How are you? How are you tonight? It's Wednesday. It's, uh, we're halfway the week. Uh, That's right. Somebody, it's hump day. Yeah, it's hump day. Hump. I don't know. It's, it's always sounding so. Well, yeah, I know. But anyways, it's not how it's meant. But Naughty. okay. I, I never. Well, yeah, I do understand why it's hump day. But it, it still sounds naughty in a way. we got some new ones here tonight right off the bat. Yeah, that's great yep. to see. Thank you guys for coming in tonight. We're yes. going to have an awesome show. Uh, yesterday we had an amazing, amazing, amazing show. It felt like a homecoming weekend of the best people Yep. Uh, all together in, in one chat, in one live stream. Uh, it was really awesome. We celebrated and shared together our 1500 with you guys and helped uh, uh, some channels uh, reach their milestones as well as yeah. a way of uh, sharing our happiness. So how cool is that? That you know? was so amazing. Like back to the roots. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you who are new today, uh, we're a husband and wife team making videos and photos at the same time getting up close and personal with YouTube creators from all over the world. This is true. Uh, every night from Monday to Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we are here on Life with Busha with our special guests and awesome you in the chat. And that's true. This yes, is true. And you is what makes our show so awesome. And since we have so many new ones in tonight, and some of you I know already, like Yankee Outdoors Adventures, seen your stuff before. Uh, so great to have you here. M and the gang. M and the gang. I like that. I kind of like the way that goes. The Mountain Survival. Uh, Pam's Great Outdoors Adventures. Uh, Mountain Survival again. Sorry, I'm double reading. RT Jake, welcome as well. Andy Einsman, the first one. Yes. Sorry, I was going back from the newest to the one that's been here since oh, the beginning. Sorry. No, no, I'm apologize. I'm just making sure that we you know. Coming in for a watch. For, oh, definitely. Hey, Joe, good to have you here. That's right. That's right. Yankees Outdoors Adventure. So good to have you here. I love your work, by the way. And this is a guy I've seen for a while now. And he is such a supporter of his group and stuff like that. It's really impressive to watch. Um. We hit 1,500 last night. We only had 42 at the beginning of February, a nice um, celebration, as Xenia said, with everybody. It was really, uh, I feel like we've created our own group. Since you have so many new people here, uh, you guys are welcome. I'm sure a lot of you know each other already, but if there's somebody you don't know and you want to meet them, you want to watch their channel, subscribe to them, please go ahead. We don't ask for subscriptions here, but you're definitely, it's, we call it a great byproduct. We kind of convince we kind of describe our show like a comedy, like going to a comedy club. Yeah. Everybody's sitting at their tables, but we please, we want you guys to mingle with everybody. And um, welcome uh, our community of the regular people who yes. come here are very welcoming and friendly. Nobody bites. Uh, they're very welcoming. So uh, That's true. Yeah, the, don't be worried about saying anything. Uh, we're very friendly and chill out. And I was thinking of something because the outdoor community is a great community, and I've seen a lot of you guys already. You'll notice that a lot of people have wrenches here, and usually after two or three times, we give them wrenches because we don't have a hierarchy here. Everybody's good at um, uh, policing themselves, I guess you call it. And uh, we, anybody who comes in here just looking for a quick sub or something like that tends to get the message quite fast. No always aggressive, but since we are celebrating our 1500, I want to celebrate with you guys. I know it's your first time, but I know you guys are connected to some good channels. So let's just go and make some moderators here. 
I want you guys, I don't want to see all the gray. I want you guys to feel a part as much as everybody else. Yeah, and that's a part of what we were saying, that you all guys are as much as part of uh, making uh, the show as the guests are, and, and we are just facilitators. That's right. Uh, and hashtag equality, hashtag blue wrench. That's right. <laughs> we, that is it, true. It's kind of a gimmick, uh, but that's true. Uh, it's know. a philosophy, too, that yeah. we have, you know, in that everybody gets to feel. Uh, there's a lot of pride in a channel that's together with a lot of people who respect and are... Um, I'm respectful of each other and supportive of each other in the right way. So this is uh, kind of the way we work. So welcome to the gang, guys. And I hope you guys can come back again as well, not just tonight. And, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I have a, I'll, in open uh, all disclosure, I have a pretty bad head cold right now, so I apologize. Yeah, I, I've been having some, uh, uh, some uh, cough syrup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> drinking sessions <laughs> so i'm a little off my game but i'm so i'm really really happy to see so many new faces here tonight such a pleasure and of course so many amazing ones that come back night after night you guys are an awesome mix uh yankee outdoors i'd love to see you guys uh, do a co-host spot on the meet and greet uh hit me up on tour Oh, yeah. awesome. Thank sure. you so much. Yeah, definitely. We'll get into it with and you on Twitter. Same with you. I mean, if you, we'd love to have you on a guest, you know, if you'd be interested, it would be our pleasure to have you. Uh, well, let's uh, do a, a, a round call or yep. call around or round call. however yep. we want to uh, do, that wanna works. do that. So, oh. Do you want to do this? No, you, that's your, your specialty. Is it? Yep. Is it? I did okay. the new ones. I even went a bit off the rails to make um, wild. Okay. Well, that's why I didn't know what we're doing. Oh, my God. I look like a baby eagle tonight. <laughs> my baby. Oh, God. Love you. Um, so tonight, <laughs> uh, awesome community. Uh, we're going to have amazing guests tonight within hiking distance. Uh, amazing couple and a little man mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, walking the trails of uh, U.S. National Parks. And, so cool. And uh, not only that, we're going to go into vacation, virtual vacation, hopefully. We all need that, right? And uh, so, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, Archer Morbid is in here. Had an amazing stream today earlier at noon time. And uh, amazing guy, uh, photography. Street photography, guy from Chicago. And uh, does a lot of shout outs to a lot of uh, new channels. And um, uh, I'd really enjoy that today. Mm -hmm. Best friend in your straight can't hear us. She's at work uh, watching us, uh, but I did say hi. Oh, you did? Uh, okay. Yeah, so for those of you uh, who doesn't know, she is at work right now, but she comes back after she's at home as well. Let's do the, um, let's do the coffee thermos test. <laughs> we got to keep that in while you're talking. There you go. You get some visual. Hey, uh, Joey, hello, hello. I know you like within hiking distance, so thank you for coming in. Amazing videographer, if you haven't checked him out. Uh, really uh, great cinematic stuff. Em and the gang. Erin, the paid tourist, uh, yeah, where are you at now? Um, Marcel Harding, the painter, Michael Fayer, Mountain Survival, welcome. Pam's Great Outdoors Adventure, uh, Panic DVDs, all spooky and paranormal. Hob Hoffman, uh, oh, our excellent. guest this week as well. Yes. <laughs> uh, she's been remixed, welcome, welcome. Carol, the original, uh, one of the people who was with us from the very first day of our live streams, which today is number 49. Tomorrow. Day, for people that said they would never do a live stream, look at us go, guys. <laughs> yeah, we have never stopped. Once we started, we never stopped. Six six nights a week, sometimes seven. Yep. Uh, Yankees Outdoor Adventures. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody new, and welcome back, uh, all of you guys who are here uh, back uh, almost or every evening now uh, so great to see you and and my favorite thing that is not your favorite thing oh my god no 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 so for all of you guys who uh want to share the the awesomeness of the stream ha 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 let's pat ourselves in the back uh, let's share this out. The more, the merrier. Uh, and the part that Andrew is like, if you are lazy, just put that share button, click like, and go to our Twitter page and tweet out one of our uh, posters today. Uh, one of our numerous posters today, actually. Uh, tweet it out. So this is our Twitter uh, handle. Just press that button. It's as easy as that. The more, the merrier. Thank you. And if you're very lazy, just don't. Do it. I know. It's okay. I'm like. 
Oh uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Yankees. It says I think me and Michael been sharing for the last ten minutes. Oh well, you are awesome, thank and you. it is so appreciated. And guys, I don't want to preach. There's one thing because I've never handed. I don't think so many wrenches to so many new people mm -hmm. tonight. So anybody that just came in, because I just gave it a couple more, we do that because everybody, it's no hierarchy here. We all make a great channel together. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned a while ago and I forgot to, just because one thing people will freak, we have a very uh, big, uh, one big golden rule here. Anybody who belongs to uh, groups for subbing or stuff like that, we don't talk about it here. We have the expression like a bar, you leave your gang colors at the door. We've had a busy day, everybody's been gaining. This is a place where everybody from all groups are welcome to sit back, meet each other, and um, it's a place to relax and have fun. So, yeah. so glad to have you all here once again. So great. Barna with wow. Hello. Okay, I got to add another moderator. Maybe there we go. Like See? Jones, welcome <laughs> back. Hello. Uh, and um, UP4204. Hi, hello, hello. Hey, the doing? train man. How are you? Yeah. What's shaking? Thank you so much. And thank you for uh, guys who says that you uh, RT our. Um, our stream i'm uh, much appreciated oh yeah that. you got that's great to hear that's the way the adventure community i that's love it Yankees. yes thank you so yeah. much we're here uh somebody yeah. uh mentioned our stream as uh one of uh the zen uh the, the most peaceful uh live streams on internet yeah. and somebody else said that it's uh the most zen place on yeah. the internet but that's what we strive to be you know drama and uh, just kick your feet up uh, have a drink, tea, coffee, or whatever you like. And None of us are gotten rich off of this at this point. We're all together. You know what? We do it because we love it. And this should be a place where we come to all celebrate people who love doing the same as we do. It's yeah. not always maybe our interest what they do, but we all enjoy watching each other's passion and what they do. Mm -hmm. So, And our channel and these live streams are really about getting uh, up and close and personal as we yes, say, uh, with people. Definitely. Because it's not just channels that are connecting. It's it's more than that. It's people behind the channels with stories in their lives, with so much experience and things to share beyond their channel. Uh, so we mostly are focusing on uh, what are they doing? Exactly. Uh, who are they? Uh, what is their story? That's what we are getting so excited about. And it's also once you, it's like meeting somebody. If they sub you, well, great. That's like a business card. And they, they really do like what you do. But if you can watch them for an hour and really learn more about them than just what they do on the camera, that person will always have a bond with you. It's like then having a business lunch with somebody. It just takes it to the next level, and that's all we want to try to do here. That's been our goal from the get-go. And thank you, Yankees Outdoor Adventure. Thank you for such a welcoming uh, uh, words. Thank you so much. We do, do appreciate that. And uh, yeah. You want to uh, check through? I hope, I oh, hope you in, enjoy that. Yes. Uh, um our live streams panic the videos uh says that uh, their goal is to get andrew to be a believer <laughs> it's from, because yeah. panic videos for those who don't know was a guest on our show and one of our shows talking about par paranormal and yep. andrew is a non-believer in paranormal. and neither is his wife his wife and, is a scientist yes his <laughs> wife the panic the wife side uh is a scientist biologist uh and i do believe yep and boris uh believes too so it kind of was very interesting and you'll notice that show is divided in two parts because he gets terrified every time i say the name now i said i never believed in anything but i said the only place i ever felt a true presence of something if there was anything was when the day that i went to auschwitz and we had a bad storm that night and it's not clickbait and it didn't make me a believer but no more than i said auschwitz and literally all the power went out in the house and our live stream was off for the next what 30 minutes yes that was quite interesting yeah so Make a believer from that. Yeah. One. Uh, <laughs> um, Resilient back. Hi, hello. I, I seen you coming in. Uh, yeah, there you are. Uh, thank you. Your editing man is going by leaps and bounds. That music video you did. I mean, the last three or four videos, you're killing it. Like, oh, yeah, I, I'm I, so I, proud I, of watching your work. And thank you for the call out and saying, he asked, he did a call out because he's, it, the video was named after us kind of thing. And he was talking about, I remember the comment, but I forgot who wrote it. One of my train videos, I, I do a lot of train videos through uh, Eastern Canada with my son. And he said, how do you get these great shots? And I said, literally, shoot like 100 times, and hopefully one of them is good. Shoot from every angle. And he was doing that. Not that I have any great advice to give anybody, but, <laughs> man, you're just killing it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, like Joey says, you guys, you, you are killing it. Yeah. Uh, oh, you wrote great, that too. There's so, yeah, uh, great, uh, great minds reverse. think alike. Canadian minds think alike. Yes. Uh, by the way, we are uh, based now in Montreal, uh, yep. Quebec, Canada. So 
But we love having you from all over. It's a pleasure to have each and every one of you guys yeah. here. Reese's Mill of Road Adventure is in. Uh, so happy to have you back. Uh, yep. I know you have been busy, uh, but uh, so nice that you, uh, when you have time, uh, to uh, jump right on. And we're always happy to see you. So welcome back. Em and the gang, that's what I do. I just take tons of shots. One or two will work out well. Exactly. I, literally right now, I have about 135 gigs of just train videos. Like literally just trains. Forget everything else, the Montreal stuff, everything. And I'll probably not even use three quarters of it when it's all said and done. Mm. Talking about uh, mods, born with uh, Bushcraft, uh, well, Tarot the Original was uh, our first mod. But then our for the longest time, <clears throat> our mod was Train Man, who yes. was 10 years old. Yeah, we were all excited. <laughs> and then he, he told us about his birthday because he was excited too. And then we found out he was 10. So <laughs> we haven't seen him a bit. I don't know if we scared him off or what. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he got detention and, and his computer got taken off. I don't know. But it was mm. so funny because we didn't know for like Yankee months or two. Yankee says we actually have a lot of Canadian adventure in our... Uh, adventurers in our group as well you'll get yeah and no, i met amazing. some of the like pinewood and all those guys yeah all we, we have had a couple a uh, couple of uh, people from uh, um, travel community yep. uh, uh like down the rabbit hole for yep. example uh from alberta uh she's a traveler uh, and uh, we have a natural uh, journey this natural journey uh, we had ATHGH travels, ATGH travels and yeah. Good Cell Life. Uh, yep. That's all a traveling community as well. So yep. that will be amazing. Happy Trails and all those guys. Uh, and yeah, all of them. my goodness. We've actually done quite well with the uh, hiking adventure and uh, travel channel, I find, has been some of our best, most consistent followers. And I'm not trying to plug all of our videos. I just don't want to be known for just live streaming. If you go back... Uh, I do a, a lot of cinematography, uh, cinematic shorts and stuff, a lot from rural Quebec where I grew up. Uh, so, of course, it's part of the Appalachians through there. If I could recommend one video to all you adventure guys that haven't seen any of our work yet, the Gas Bay Windmill Train seems to be a lot of people's favorites. Uh, my son and I followed it. It's a two-kilometer long uh, train with just windmill blades made in eastern Quebec, the Gas PZ, as it goes across about, I don't know, hundred and uh, maybe about 120 kilometers over four hours and you get to see a lot of the scenery through the area and stuff like that yeah i'll just uh post a link you don't have to go there but no. if you are interested yeah. uh, then you can just go and check out our uh main uh side of work yeah. <laughs> and there is atj's travels amazing we just mentioned you <laughs> and yes yankee i agree with you the outdoor creators on youtube seem to be a very caring community no matter what you come from. i agree with that very much so. I always, or, and the you know another one too was right was the beer community, yes. like uh, beer belly travelers and all those guys yes. and them. They've also been really good. Um, even the knife community uh, was pretty good. Uh, I mean, we have whole sorts of different channels, but I think travel is because we love travel so much. We love traveling. Uh, oh, thank uh, you, Rosori and Buck. I like the eighties video, uh, the eighties vid. Forget the full name. Bustin yeah, she brought the 80s back to uh, Montreal. Yeah, that's probably my most heavily edited. And there's a great example. I had all this B footage of Montreal, and I didn't know what to do with it. And I had this song for months, because I usually do the song. I pick the song and then find the video. And I had it for months. I loved this, the, the beat, and then finally came up with this. And I, my wife had done a photo session with my niece the year before, a beautiful young lady. So I just put everything together and made the music video from the 80s I never got to make when I was younger. Uh, and Joey was asking about what a shot glass by my head. Well, yesterday oh, yes. uh, we did a little unboxing. Uh, we got a gift from our guests from before, uh, Juliet Miranda from the Unwritable Rant podcast. Yep. Uh, one of top 200 uh, podcasts on iTunes. She was our guest previously and they sent us uh, this amazing flask uh, so we, that we got oh, yesterday. Wait, wait, let me see. Wait, 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 wait. We got to take some thumbs up. Okay. Oh, well, we got a flask. We ah. got. I don't know what did you do there. Uh, we got a sticker and a beautiful written card from Julianne. And uh, I want and, to gleam and, and shine. Yeah, an amazing. Uh, Isn't that so flask. cool? Yeah, we were so happy. So it was so and, nice. And we got the mug last week from Hosier OD. Yeah, we got etched glass mug and a sticker from Hosier OD uh, last week that we did unboxing of our. Uh, guest panel, I would call it. <laughs> so that was really nice. That's right, Yankees. That's coming up. <laughs> Actually, I think one of my friends is sending me some maple syrup whiskey. 
And yeah. uh, so that will definitely, there we get the mix a bit of uh, the U.S. and the Canadian together. Uh, Always well, makes for a good mix. Ju Juliet is a bourbon, uh, bourbon specialist. Yeah, she might, give yeah. Us, she might get mad at me if I put anything else into it. So we'll yeah, get the bourbon. So, uh, mm. and, and yeah, they're doing the, the, the contest. You can win actually 15-year-old bourbon uh, if you review one of their podcasts. So check it out. Oh, I'm in the gang. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, if you want to send us in Twitter or something like that, uh, our link. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, uh, we we'd love are to. planning uh, uh, on uh, displaying uh, that we, uh, again, for those of you who are new, uh, we actually just. Uh, uh did a renovation and painted our walls just this weekend uh, previously we had the posters here we had a doodle doug uh, did an amazing doodle of us and we had a certified pair of peeps from panic d uh so we will try and figure out how we can display them here as well so go ahead and uh well, there's our twitter uh thank you so much <laughs> that that is really cool no oh my god you guys are so awesome yeah thank you and of course we have twitter and instagram if you guys are on instagram um our pictures are more on instagram and our video is more here and twitter is kind of the, the medium for for youtube videos uh live streams and then a little bit of facebook obviously so Sorry. we can you can find us everywhere at pusha studios uh I so just there you go something here oh after i send the link in twitter huh? um or is it facebook uh twitter twitter okay uh, yeah oh, let me find it i had so much uh, today. i know today has been such a, <laughs> with the renovations and stuff like that we feel like we're just coming apart i want to show you guys this was by doodles by doug and this is a caricature of us as one night xenia said um, well she kept cutting me off and i'm like well you stop so then she took this uh, pillow uh one of these ikea ones we have for our daughter with a bunch of wool with three big buttons and wrapped a scarf and put a hat on it, sunglasses, typical Xenia fashion. Took about five minutes to set up. So then I went and grabbed this five foot monkey that my daughter, we had bought our daughter for Christmas, and I put it in my place and ended the show that way. So Doodles by Doug took both of our personalities and put them into the monkey in the pillow. And yeah, he did a live stream. He's actually his first live stream was doing this. That's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was quite amazing. We loved it so much. It was so cool. Hmm. Uh, Sidewalk closed. Hello, hello. Welcome back. So good to have you guys all here. Did you find it? On yeah. Uh, and I just messaged them. So you can see oh. in the first message okay. uh, on Twitter. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Hello. Hello, ATJ Travels. Tracy says hi. Everyone. Hey, Tracy. How you doing? Oh, you're done on your own one tonight. Where's Andrew? That's so nice of you, uh, Em and the gang. Cool offering. Uh, sidewalk closed. Hey, how are you? Welcome. So good to have you back. We're just getting ready to bring on our guests here. I'm just. Yep. Uh, our special guest today within hiking distance, a couple and the little man. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, that is so cool. Yeah, uh, hiking uh, through U.S. national parks and, and other destinations as well. So we hope to get you guys and us as well on some virtual hiking travel trips today. I think we all deserve it in the middle of the week. Cali Bay TV tweeted, thank you. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you know, I was wishing, I, I know he doesn't get done as much with his new job. I wish Biker Bushcraft could drop by too. Yeah. Too. He sometimes messages yep. on a, uh, on a Twitter. We we still are in touch, which is so awesome about these live streams is that it gets us closer with channels yep. and it gets people in the chat to know more. And once you know more about people, you connect, you, better. You connect better with the channel. You know, you you go and you want to watch the videos because you, you become friends. You want to know what's going on. You know, that's right. Uh, and I and I and I think that's why we keep doing these. I hope. Oh, oh, there I can say, it. Rob uh, Hoffman. Thank you so much for coming by. Such a pleasure to have you here. Yep, and I hope to see you Definitely. this week later on on our guest spot. And Biker <laughs> Bushcraft was an amazing guest. If any of you haven't seen him yet, if you get a chance after, you can check out the replay of his. He was another one. That was the only two times the internet ever went down. And he was the first one. Yeah, and he was so gracious. It took us like an hour to get everything set up. Yeah. Again, we had to call our uh, provider, and uh, he came on like the true gentleman. He talked a lot about his life and about his wife. Do you know for his fortieth birth, for his wife's fortieth birthday, because they live in Cali, he's ordered forty lobster from Maine and had them sent over. He's such a gentleman. 
um, uh, TriStar travelers, uh, just try to close everything, uh, maybe restart your computer and come back on, and maybe that would solve it. I uh, hope so. This natural journey is in our friends from New Zealand. Hey! It's their uh, lunchtime. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. How is it on Thursday lunchtime going on right now? I always like to ask that. Um, there we go. And Reese's was a gamer. Oh, well, I didn't know that. I, I figured somebody's using the hashtag the same as you are. I didn't know it was you, the split personality. <laughs> he would lose his mind with all the blue wrenches in here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Night shame, the coolest voice in the whole net. Oh How are yeah, you? the pilot from Norwegian Airlines. No, he's not. My little darling. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a. He's live streams usually right after hours. Oh, like we got Corn Life Network in here. Hey, hello, how are hello. you? Newly weds are here. Yes, that's right. Who live streamed their wedding the other yes, night? Yes, the wedding live on YouTube was happening. Yep. Yes, that was awesome. You guys have to be on the honeymoon again. That's right. Yes. Are you guys decent right now? Are yeah. you able to be on here? And within hiking distances in the chat right now, our guests for tonight. Uh, so there you go. You can see them and hopefully they can connect with us in a few seconds uh, just by pressing that link that we just sent you. <laughs> um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it works. Yeah, I know. Every time. It always feels like Armageddon every time. <laughs> yeah, it's Matt. Uh, Matt over his lunchtime from New Zealand. Uh, that's amazing. It's so amazing that we're in so different places in the world and we can connect together and spend just an awesome, fun time. Uh, that's really, really cool. Whatever this world can throw at anybody, we all have each other. We're all good to each other. It doesn't fix everything in life, but it's nice to have a place for an hour or two. We can all hang out, just enjoy ourselves. And Rick, we're not uh, kicking you guys out, but <laughs> you'll have to promise me that you're going to spend extra time on honeymoon afterwards because... It's your honeymoon, guys. We wouldn't hold it against you. <laughs> it's a special time. Um, oh, you created the channel oh. in January. So you're more into gaming now, focusing okay. than your uh, tractors. Okay. <coughs> Mowers. You're a man of many talents, my friend. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. I hope they're okay. They just messaged yep. me a moment ago that they're, oh, they're typing something. So, again, uh, we're just waiting for our guests yep. to come on. Uh, in the meantime, you can uh, press the like button and share. Check out our Twitter. Uh, check it out. Uh, don't go anywhere. Um, and don't be shy, guys. If there's a channel you see there that catches your eye, uh, we'll be uh, Oh, oh a little man. Oh, okay, no, no problem, problem, guys. We'll so gonna... they're having a little man emergency, so they'll be here any minute. So, yeah. TriStar Travelers. So I you fixed, fixed it. it. Perfect. That's good. Glad Excellent. To Glad to hear that. Thank Em and the gang. Thank you for sharing. It is so appreciated. We don't and we don't want to hound you guys. We're not that type of channel. It's gonna be hounding you all the time. Yep. That's the greatest thing we'd ask for, and I appreciate it. Michael Fair, uh Panic the Videos, is that uh, the channel that you're having your co-op together with uh, this week? All this week? I hope I'm right. <laughs> uh, oh, you seen your Gettysburg video? Hmm. Yeah, I love those stuff. Yeah, those streams are spooky. spooky. To anybody new here, especially the hiking guys that are here and and guys and girls that are here tonight, um, we also do a lot of traveling. We've uh, done a lot. I've done a lot of trains through Europe and stuff like that. I grew up in a rural area. Oh, oh we have our guest. Hey. hey! Hi guys! Welcome. So nice to see you. My God, this is a long time coming. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. The little man emergency, okay? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a kind of a TV emergency. <laughs> we know those ones. <laughs> oh my God! So good to have you guys here. So good to be with you. Uh, it, you know, it feels like being with friends. It's just awesome. <laughs> oh, I know. You. Uh, that's, same here. Yeah, that's <laughs> mutual as can be. So, uh, so thank you so much for sharing your time with us and all that. I know, especially with all you guys traveling, and a little guy who definitely takes up some of your time. It is really appreciated for you guys to come on. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love your background, by the way. Look, you sitting out on your. Is it on your porch? Uh, it's wherever we're renting right now. <laughs> can you can you see us well? We're not too dark or. Uh, it is a little, little bit dark. dark. We can see you. Yeah, but it's dark. 
Uh, we can we can move a little. I don't want to disrupt yeah, things for you guys too much. Let's see. How about? Oh, that's better. Oh my God. Yep. There. It's like a whole new room. But it was beautiful. <laughs> yes. <background> beautiful. <laughs> I know. You won't have the background. You just have us. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. You guys are more than enough. <laughs> We're more than happy just to have you guys uh, great faces on the cameras. So. Anyway. There you go. Well, you, you guys yeah. got quite a following. You brought a lot of new channels here tonight, so we got to thank you, first of all. <laughs> yeah, we have a wonderful hiking community. I saw we have Mike Ferrer, we have Yankee, we have Life Adventures with Eric and Melissa, M and the Gang, TriStar. We have a bunch of great people on this group. Oh, that's so cool. Well, thank you guys so much. Well, it's you, know, you definitely have a core following mm -hmm. and a really good core following. And we were just talking with Yankee before you guys came on saying about how great the outdoor community is to each other. And I love watching that and all the comments, the supportiveness. It's not just like uh, like 42 or a nice hike. It's really, really two, three lines a lot of times of, you know, I asking about the equipment, uh, the location, was it like a rough climb? I love that engagement. You guys are so lucky to have that in that community. Absolutely. Yes, they they really they really care. Yes. Well, that's good. That that makes it makes it so much more rewarding. That's the whole reason why when we kind of the apocalypse for us really helped us was actually getting the chance to get out and have more people see our work because there was nothing more frustrating than putting so much work into something and barely anybody noticing it. But with you guys in communities, I find you guys bypass it a bit. It was more open to support each other a lot faster. Mm -hmm. That's, That's true. true. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll start off. If you guys want to talk a little bit about yourselves, like uh, I always, it's an open end question. You can go back as far as you want or as much detail as you want. But there are some people tonight, I'm sure most of them have seen you by now, but just a little bit about yourselves. Sure. Do you want me to start? Yeah. Off? yeah okay. Go ahead. Are they watching us on Hangouts? Are you guys watching us on Hangouts? Or are you guys watching us on the YouTube page? I'm on the Hangouts. What do you prefer? So, uh, you're on the Hangouts. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect then. Okay. Uh, just don't watch the the YouTube one. You can pause the YouTube video, but just leave the chat open if you want. But yeah, watch us on Hangouts. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so we've been traveling since um, last August, so August 2017. Um, you know, this was just something that we thought about for a while. We were originally thinking of traveling, you know, around the world. But, uh, you know, my wife is French, Alexandra, and, uh, you know, she has the green card. And we had the opportunity to travel in the United States. Just, you know, the contract let me do that. So, yeah, we just we used to live in Washington, D.C. for a number of years. Um, I'm from Idaho originally, and like I said, she's from France. So right now we just have the opportunity before our son is in school to travel around to some national parks. And, yeah, it's been working out real well so far. That is so cool. Now, what an adventure mm -hmm. story. I like that you guys have a plan like that. You know, it's 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 really – I think of people looking at a place about a diner and seeing the map of the states and saying, you know what? I think we can do this, you know, and, and you guys are really sticking to it. It's so cool. No, oh, yeah, it's a it's a lot of planning. You know, we plan out probably five or six months in advance. Um, so, you know, everything's in a Microsoft project uh, spreadsheet. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, you know, just because we can, you know, it'd be so much easier to have a camper and that type of stuff. But with little one, you know, just renting a place is – makes it a lot easier when you have separate rooms definitely <laughs> that's a lot of together time otherwise i get too loud and clear <laughs> but you are making it work and i mean people love what you're doing and uh the the enthusiasm in your videos that's what really caught me when i first found you guys was there's no labor into it it's just this it's just nothing but passion that's what i thought was so cool about it yeah i mean we hiked uh almost 450 miles so far so we keep track of you know a lot of analytics uh so about 450 miles since last august about 190 hikes um all together we hike almost you know almost every day if we're close to the park or wow. you know every couple of days if we're farther but uh, you know we try to do a couple of hikes every week and 
you know, like our, in Yellowstone, we hiked like 50 miles during our month that we were there, our longest. Um, within one week, we hiked uh, almost, you know, mid thirties, like 35 miles in one week so far. That was at Capitol Reef. <clears throat> so, I mean, we just, yeah, we like hiking um, after work and, you know, pretty much every chance we get. <laughs> well, yeah, we just want to get out, you know, when we... When we left DC, we wanted to get out of the routine. You know, you commute, you go to work, you come back home, you're exhausted, you crash in front of the computer, and you start all over again. And we were just, we just didn't want that anymore. It was just not, not a good life for us. No, and and you guys took the bull by the horns and made something new, and that's so commendable. A lot of people say they want to do it, but you guys actually did it. Yes, we have so many people saying, oh, you're so lucky or you're so brave. And it's, you know, it, it takes a little bit of both for sure. Uh, but, it, you you know, the hardest step is actually the first step saying yeah. we're going to do this and we're going to do it the right way and, and do it seriously. You know, not just, oh, yeah, we'll visit one place and then we're, you know, we're done. Yes. Or what I really like about you guys is, like you said, you're running a place, you know, you're doing multiple hikes. So we, some people treat it like pins on a map. Okay, we stopped here for the day. That's covered. Now we're on to the next one. Covered. You guys are actually taking time to really enjoy this, you know, the place, get a feel for it. Um, it, it I don't know. It's just more, I, I find it so commendable. I really am impressed by that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, we tried to you know, stay in a place, uh, you know, well, I mean, we plan out so far in advance, we'll take a look at, you know, where we want to stay. So, you know, we, like I said, we stayed in Yellowstone for a month and, you know, that was still way too short. Uh, and yeah. We stayed in Moab for a month, which is close to arches and canyon lands and, you know, like Dead Horse uh, Point State Park and a bunch of other things. So we actually have a list of, you know, where do we want to go back to things we've missed along the way. We have, to, <laughs> we have a list of that. But yeah, I mean, we try to stay in a place, you know, we're in Yosemite um, in that area right now, and we're here for a month. So we'll be exploring this for a while. We just arrived here. Um, yeah, what do you but it's usually about between one to four weeks somewhere. Well, what do you think of it right now? What do you guys think of it? You say you've been there for a little bit. What do, What's your thoughts on it right now? Like, where are you, where's your mindset at where you're at right now? What we think of Yosemite? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I mean, we just, so so far we've just been able to do uh, one uh, to go one day, and we got poured on <laughs> by the rain. <laughs> yeah, like we, we just arrived a couple of days ago, so we just got settled, and yeah, you know, we're just uh, yeah, we got poured on the first time, but yeah, we'll go we'll go back, you know, tomorrow and over the weekend. It's a three day weekend here in the U.S. and yeah, just go a couple times every week and, you know, do, do the hikes and just explore for the next four weeks. But even with the rain and the clouds, oh, my gosh, it was just fantastic. When you arrive, you know, we, we arrived from the – we went through the tunnel and then you have this view on the valley and the Bridal Veil Falls and it's just, wow, it just hits you like a train, you know. It's mm -hmm. just, wait, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> To, to watch this you know it's um yeah it's amazing it just feels it almost feels unreal sometimes to be able to witness that and say yeah we can go again you know next yeah. week or next weekend or tomorrow if we want to so cool it gives you a little more leeway like that that's that's exactly what i was talking about a while ago you know you're not stuck where you're like okay i got two days so i have to make everything happen no matter what you can take a breath and say, well, we'll wait till tomorrow when it's better and go or something like that. So that's really cool. Because mm. you coming from, how, how long have you been in the States for, if I may ask? Uh, yes, uh, it's been six years. Oh, oh, okay. So you've been here for a while then. So, Because uh, my wife, of course, I think you guys probably know by now, she's from Latvia. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Like um, when she came to Canada, she was blown away by the, the size of everything. Where over there they went for an eighty kilometer drive, and it's like we'll stop halfway and have something to eat and put up our feet. You know, it's like a three hour drive sometimes to get there. And my parents <laughs> live eight hundred and fifty kilometers away, and you're still in the province of Quebec because, of course, there's not many provinces compared to the states. So, like Ontario is uh, almost a full day drive just to go from one end to the other. Oh my 
Uh, yeah, I think she found it kind of a bit of a culture shock at first. Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, Europe has more uh, uh, soft uh, paced uh, lifestyle <laughs> uh, comparing to Canadian or states, so to say. <laughs> I don't know if you find it the same way or not. <laughs> Yes, that's so funny. It's true, you know. And in, in, in France, if you drive for half an hour, it's almost like really long. Yeah, yeah. you don't you want to push it too hard, you know. And eight hours is like, oh my gosh, huge uh -huh. deal. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's right. Did you find it hard at first when you guys started to travel? No, no. I think I got used to it. I mean, we would travel from DC. We went to we went to Montreal and Quebec City and Toronto. I mean, we would we wouldn't drive. We would fly mm -hmm. most of the time but, but we would we love to travel no right. matter so when we travel together you know in, in other countries and we would take the bus for hours and so it's just a way to get used to it and we were kind of I, mean, I don't think you're always prepared for it because when you go from point a to point b and you look at google and you're like <sighs> Oh, cats! It's kind of far. I think we'll have to stop somewhere on the way because it's 13 hours, and we have a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's something to count on for sure. See, Xenia doesn't see that on a map. That's the problem. Like, she's like, "Oh, I got an idea. Let's drive through Portugal. We'll start like in Lisbon, and she wants to drive all the way to Italy." And I'm like, "Do you know how far that is? Well, Do you realize there's no highways like in North America? Do you realize I'll be like retired when we come back from the drive?" <laughs> We have done east-west coast, you know, with our car. So I figured that, uh, uh, you know, a drive from Portugal uh, all uh, around, you know, Mediterranean Sea yeah. and, and to Italy would be amazing. Like, why mm -hmm. not? <laughs> At an average speed of probably 60 kilometers an hour on some of the windiest roads in the Mediterranean. And so Being from France, you support me in this? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it, Thank it's, you. well, it's great. It's 8.42 and I'm already outnumbered. So this has been so much fun tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. We did a lot of road trips in Europe. Like we drove, uh, we had the kids the other year. There were four and eight. And we spent six days in Iceland in a Honda Civic with no hotels. And Oh, wow. And we, then we went to, we stayed one night at a friend's house. And then we went to Denmark for four days with no hotels. <laughs> Then we went to Latvia, and then we took off uh, two weeks later. Yeah, and we went down through Lithuania and went through there for a couple of days. And uh, I don't know, we do a lot of off the cuff leaving. Like I've come home from work and say, "Let's go," and she packs a bag and we're gone. And I'm like you guys. I always wanted my kids to grow up from the beginning knowing how to travel. I believe that's the greatest gift you can give them is the ability to be able to just jump into something without having to to be nervous about it, you know, and on the road and things changing and, and used to change because I grew up in a very small town. And as much as I love the people there, I found change was always kind of a, well, yeah, any small town, like even in Latvia where your uncles live, I mean, small towns are small towns. Change isn't such a thing they love to jump into with both feet all the time. Yeah. Not everybody's like that. But I guess it was just one of the high priorities on my list for when I had kids. I wanted them right from the get-go to be able to be flexible that way. And I love what you're doing with your son. I think it's I, – I can't commend you enough for doing it. I think it's incredible. Thanks. You know, the thing is we don't – we didn't know how he was going to be because when he was really young, he hated the car. He would scream his head off. Really? Oh, oh yeah. He wasn't an easy traveler in the car. The The – plane was fine but in the car it would just cry so loud you couldn't hear the music you couldn't hear the person talking next to you it was oh really <laughs> oh yes but i don't know for some reason he's he's always been really good on this trip yeah and this that's the yeah this whole trip he's been good yeah 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 well it's excellent we've so uh, <laughs> sorry what was that we've done some long drives you know like eight eight hours, nine hours in a day. We, we try not to do that too often. You know, if we move to a place, we try to make it like two or three hours between locations, but sometimes, you know, it's oh. just got to be a long drive. Yeah, that's it. You just got to buckle it up and say, okay, for this day, we gotta, we're got to we just going to get through it and uh, better days tomorrow. So <laughs> but it's funny for the car because, I mean, so many times that was kind of the fix if your kid was had colic or anything was put him in the car and drive. Mm -hmm. That's why I was surprised. Oh, yeah, no, he hated it so much. 
<laughs> he's actually he's coming. He heard. I think he heard. Oh, oh there we go. Excellent. Hi. Look at this. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. How are you today? Little man. <laughs> <laughs> he's being shy. <laughs> oh, there's nothing to be shy of here. <laughs> But I understand I'd be shy too, so don't worry about that. We were just on your mom and dad about uh, seeing lots of places. Do you like to travel with mommy and daddy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, his favorite thing recently was the banana slugs in Redwoods. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Really? Amazing. So you get to do lots of really nice, really great stuff. Yeah, you, like the pelican seagulls, yeah. all that stuff. Oh yeah. Did you yeah, like you start, you start in, uh, <laughs> pretty much all the words for all the animals along the way? <laughs> well, that's a yeah, that's, that's a great cool. learning experience. And getting so close to the nature, you know, getting to experience all that. That is so cool. He's seen so many things already. Yeah, I know. You it's know. so cute. Yeah, <laughs> he's a real little man. He lives up to his namesake. <laughs> And the thing I love the most about it is that, and he's done it, he did it in Yosemite actually, he just looks at, I don't know, a landscape. And he says, wow, beautiful. Oh, so he's inspired. He's got the bug for it. Yes, you know, and it just, I, I, I never really expected anything from him. You know, I didn't know how he was going to react or what, but just seeing him being amazed by the beauty we see it means you know it's really talking to him and I, i'm just so grateful for that well, yeah i mean that shows that you guys are doing something really good with him so Amazing. i think i'm so i'm really actually really happy to hear that so good for you guys that must make you feel good about your decision to do it yeah yeah it's an added added bonus <laughs> we think we were going to do it anyway <laughs> <laughs> It never hurts if they all get along. You'll realize that the older they get, <laughs> if you got them on your side, it goes 10 times easier. Yeah. Mm. So you're originally from the States. You said, where, where was it again? Sorry. Were you yeah, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So Idaho, right. We're actually and, just maybe two hours from Canada. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You're pretty, out, pretty close to the border. Have you been up that way through Canada? Yeah, yeah. You know, we went camping in Banff uh, a couple of years ago. Okay. And, you know, just while I was younger, you know, went up to Creston or Trail, some of the smaller towns across the border. But uh, yeah, you know, we'd like to go back up there. It's pretty nice. <laughs> My favorite place, I think, in the whole West was Jasper. Jasper yeah. Jasper's like Banff a little more north, but it's just, it's because it's so controlled in the population. So it just even has more of that natural side to it. It's such a tiny little place. I know in 2009, no, I went in 2006 or something. I took my son, and I think back then they hadn't issued a housing permit since 1982. Oh. So they really controlled the building situation there and that. So, That's nice. but, but Banff, I mean, is beautiful too, don't you? You know, I took Xenia that way. Yeah, and, I, I loved it a lot. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. The mountains. I mean, I, I never really seen uh, mountains so big where I come from, the highest hill is 314 meters that's all <laughs> uh, <laughs> you won't get altitude sickness on top of it we'll yeah, say that <laughs> uh, that's our skiing trail so yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, yeah it was amazing just uh, even driving up from calgary and, and seeing the rockies on the horizon is just slowly coming closer and closer to them as we drive there uh, was was mind-blowing I would love to go back to Colorado. I've been there before, but I'd like to take her sometime and then maybe even start more north and work your way down following the, the ridges and everything. Such beautiful scenery all down through there. Uh, I, um, we're very lucky. I mean, we have, and probably you from France as well would be the same as Xenia because they're such big countries. The land is so diverse. You know, there's everything from deserts to mountains to forest uh, prairies i mean the two countries i mean it's amazing how many uh, landscapes we actually have you could spend your whole life traveling through just the two countries and never see everything that's true that's really a thing you know in in france or everywhere in europe you know you would have those teeny tiny places that are little heavens that yes. is, they're just so small there's yeah. no way you could you could see so much nature 
um, preserved the, the way it is in, in Canada or in the US. We do it because we have nobody that's living here. That's why it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> we always say the population of California is the population of Canada. So for them, it's pretty hard to trample on everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah it's true. One state equals the whole country here. <laughs> so we, all, we love Canadians. <laughs> oh, and us with you guys as well, friends in the United States. We're all, we're all in this together, right? So... So, uh, what, can I ask what originally brought you to the States? Did you guys meet and come over, or were you here before and then met? Uh, we, we met in France. You did? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was, uh, I was, we were doing our master's in the same city, but we were in different schools. Okay. And uh, we just met in a bar. I was looking <laughs> for a salsa dance class, wow. and he... He drinks beer, so <laughs> he, we ended up at the, at the bar that was offering both. <laughs> oh, that's <so> amazing! <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of yes. And then we uh, dated for a couple of months before he went back to the U.S. because his uh, school, his, his master's, was ending, and he was going to start his internship. He was looking for one. He didn't know where he was going to be, and it was the same for me. And we ended up being in that same city again. <laughs> oh my God! You're not. You're not serious. Yeah, it was. It was pure, pure luck, really. And so I was still in that city, and I said, "Let's just come and live together." <laughs> so, yeah. After dating for two months, we started yeah. living together. Wow, that's yeah. amazing! That so and you know, cool. it's a that's come call it destiny. That's right. <laughs> that's amazing. A, love it. a Joe writes love story. He just wrote here, so that's yeah. right. It is a love story. A Joe, by the way, is uh, for uh, I think multiple times already during our talk has uh, talked how much he loves you guys. His channel. Mm -hmm. um, he says, uh, "I just wanted to say that I absolutely love with the hiking distance footage editing." everything yes. my total compliments to you guys for having such a beautiful channel so much respect oh thank, thank you, you joe it really means a lot we love your videos too we're huge fans <laughs> every time i'm looking for the new effect like oh my gosh what did you do again <laughs> i know it's almost like winning the lottery when an a joe video pops up <laughs> Oh, yes. And I actually I told him in a comment that it's almost like watching Breaking Bad. You know, it feels like it's like, oh, what's going on, you know, in the new episode? What a great comparison. I yes, never thought of that. How true. It's so true. Yeah. What a great way of putting it. I love that. <laughs> that's a great quote. <laughs> Write that down and say it's yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> you delete the video. We need to get no, but that's so it. true. That the yeah. feel of it, it, it is. You're right on spot on there, uh, for sure. Like Breaking Bad. And, and it's so funny. Like you have people that like this one, like that one, don't like this group, less like. But everybody likes a Joe. He's just that one that everybody can agree on. To. It's always a common ground channel. So. Oh yeah, he's really talented. He's a natural for sure. So, which part of uh, France did you grow up into? Northeast in Lorraine. Oh, beautiful area. It's it's beautiful. It's very gray, lots of rain. Uh, but we, we do have beautiful architecture, amazing food. Yes. Mm, <laughs> we, have I, uh, a lot of as well. we do have a lot, a lot of outdoors too, definitely. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to spend some more I I back I was uh, I had never traveled by train in my life, like the big famous train travel in Europe, and I did it when I was forty one. And I did 12 countries in 15 days. I landed in Brussels and went all the way to Croatia and then back up to Switzerland. Oh, and, wow. I, and I spent 24 hours in Paris with no hotel. I was uh, just walking the streets before I flew to Poland. So, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I loved it because I, I took a train. I, I landed and didn't even stay in Brussels. I took a train right away to Luxembourg. And then that evening I went to Metz and then from Metz to Paris. And then just waited till the next day till my flight was ready. But it was so cool. Oh, Mest is where I studied, actually. Oh, is it? Oh, wow. Oh, that's a it's a beautiful area. I didn't get to see a lot of it, but what I see, I don't know. I just loved it. It was all new, you know, you're excited and just trying to take in what you can. So I was glad that I got there. I wish I could go back and see more of it, actually. Yeah, it's pretty. There's a lot of beautiful areas all through there. I mean, France compared to other European countries is quite a large country too. So it is more diverse than some of the others. 
way bigger yes, than yeah. way we do bigger have than, a lot of diversity in, in landscapes and uh, outdoors you know you have the mountains you have the meadows yeah. you have the sea yeah um yeah there's we're pretty lucky i have to say yeah you do you cover a lot of bases and which is quite rare in european countries to have that many options in one country so i think it's pretty cool and like you say the food never hurts either <laughs> so yeah yeah I miss it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I, I would understand that completely. What do you guys do uh, when you are hiking? Uh, how do you uh, do the cooking? I know you're renting the places, so it might be a bit dif different than camping out. But still, you are changing the places, your locations. How do you do the, the cooking part of the food? Uh, <laughs> it's not very nutritious. No, like, like mostly peanut butter and jelly and something while we're hiking. <laughs> you know, something quick and easy. And then, depending, well, I mean, you can do pasta either in the microwave or on the stove. You know, that's usually in that. Or potatoes a lot. I don't know. It's just uh, something quick and easy that gets you some calories, I guess. Well, yeah, you need them for those hikes. You know, pastas, potatoes. What else? That's pretty much it. <laughs> 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 yeah, we had quinoa yesterday. We did like a big, uh, big move on our nutrition plan because uh, we we stop in places and sometimes. So we were for a week in Sequoia and we just have a microwave. That's true too. Sometimes depending where you are, that's right. And we actually in in this place here where we're staying, we have a microwave, just a microwave too. Though the owners are very nice and they they offer their the kitchen if we need to to cook. Oh. It's so that that's very nice, and we'll definitely take them on <laughs> their word. But um, often we actually just have a microwave, so anything that fits in the microwave, you know, that works. So we're actually looking into new recipes that are a little more healthy right <laughs> now. <laughs> and, and you guys must meet a lot of nice people. I think that would be a great part of it too. I mean, I'm sure not everybody's, but most places you stay, you must get to meet like the owners or people around get to meet some really nice interesting people through along the way yeah and yeah alex even more so since she's out and about during the day with the little one and right he meets uh yeah a lot of people at, at the library park um playgrounds, playgrounds. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get we get all the tips from the locals when i go to the playground you know i every time i start a conversation i ask them where we need to hike and <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> the most. <laughs> Love that. And yeah, when you got a little one, that's definitely a conversation starter, especially I'm sure if there's other mothers around or people in the playground and that, it definitely gets you to talk to other people a lot quicker. Yeah. Absolutely. And then sometimes we also have the opportunity to hike with other people. Um, so when we were in Vegas, we hiked with Eric from Life Adventure with Eric and Melissa. Oh, cool. And so we actually went on four hikes with Eric. Uh, we just got along so well <laughs> that so cool. every time we had a, a, you know, we could make it fit together. Then we just went for a hike, and it was it was just great. Isn't that the cool part of all of this? Is the networking, getting to know people, you know, to become actual like friends. It's it's a new way of making friends, in my opinion. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's evolved now to this point where you can do collabs and. You're going to have people that you'll know for the rest of your lives because of it. Absolutely. Yes. And there are so many people and, and you know, a bunch of them are tonight with us that I, I would love to hike with. You know, I know it would be so much fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they're on the East Coast. We're on the West Coast. And so, so far, we're not planning on going to the East Coast right now. So it's <laughs> it wouldn't work. And um, unless they come and travel, then no. just let no. us know, guys. And we're <laughs> the door is <door's> always open. <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, that's what I was just going to tell you is there's not much hiking right here in this part of Montreal, but if you're ever in this way, I'd love to have you. <laughs> mm. Gaspé, though, is uh, well known for that, especially the mountains part. Yeah, the Gaspé Z where I grew up, which is, if you look on a map of Quebec, it's the thumb that sticks out where the St. Lawrence River comes into Canada. That's where I'm from originally. Mm, beautiful. And it is really nice. It's uh, it's very scenic. Uh it probably would remind you a little bit of the south coast of France. Uh, you yeah. know, it has that uh, inlet water, uh, uh, you know, water edge towns feel, uh, and mountains in the background. So uh, beautiful, beautiful scenery. And and I know lots of people are hiking through the mountains there in winter and in summer, and especially in the fall when all the maple trees are turning red. 
and all the mountains are colored in red. It's it's such a beautiful time of the year there. So if you ever think of coming this way, it's it's definitely something to look into. That's one of the big rocks. It's called Perse Rock, and they figured it was moved during the Ice Age. It's about 500 feet long with a hole inside of it, and that's some of the areas that a lot of people like to hike through in that. So Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that's the like you know, it's the same as the states. You have things that represent. Oh, there's one better with the hole into it. You can see there. Oh wow! And there's a little boat that there's well a boat. I think it holds about 15, 20 people that actually on high tide can take you through the middle of it through the hole. So, um, no, it's a nice area. But you know, when you're growing up in a small town, I was one of those ones that like I just wanted to get out at the time. I was into music. I was into all these things and felt like the world was passing me by. But now I got to say that I'm with Xenia. I'm kind of seeing the place through a whole new, new light. So she kind of yeah. opened it up to my hometown a bit more. So. I was in awe of the first time we went yeah. there to visit my in-laws. So I'm like, it's an amazing place. And, and I think people, mm. as you said, when you are within, you can't kind of see it as much yeah. uh, than when you visit it. So uh, what were one of your favorite okay. places uh, to visit uh, so far? Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, so... so Keep a list of kind of our favorite parks, and I think Yellowstone is the top of them right now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like Bryce Canyon, uh, and then, you know, Capitol Reef. Um, I mean, there's so many. I think Yosemite, once we get through this, is going to be up at the top, too. Um, cool. Yeah. You know, uh, so we visited, like, 15 national parks. You know, we visit national preserves like Mojave. We've been to, like, Grand Escalante, which is a national monument. Uh, National Conservation Area, like Red Rock Canyon and, um, you know, like Mount Charleston, which is a national recreation area. So we visit a lot of other things aside from national parks. And we also visit, say, we stayed uh, a week in Park City, which we also loved. Uh, there's a ton of parking, uh, sorry, hiking there. And the time of year we were at was in the fall where you, the, mm. the trees were just, you know, yeah, just gorgeous. Oh. So we're actually going to go back there <laughs> later this year. <laughs> So it depends. It's mostly, you know, we base around national parks, but uh, if there's something around else or on the way that we see, then we'll stop. But, uh, you know, in terms of just beauty and all that stuff, it has everything, animals, you know, the geological features. Yellowstone is definitely number one. But each park is unique and uh, has its own little thing, um, which makes it cool. So I, it's hard to say sometimes so well we, we tend to enjoy places that are less crowded right mm -hmm. yeah. so capitol reef for example was fantastic because it's so remote a lot of people skip it right you know, from arches and canyonland to bryce because you kind of have to take a little scenic road to go all the way down to capitol reef mm -hmm. and, and, and it, it was easy to get there because yes. we just stayed a couple miles out so like in 10 minutes 15 minutes you're at a trailhead yeah, whereas some places, you know, it takes an hour. Two, sometimes. It just depends where you're staying. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, the closeness, the proximity, and, yeah, the remoteness definitely play a factor. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Can I ask where the idea came from to start, like, visiting all the parks? Like, was it like a like a... A flash of light that told you you should do this. Like, I'm, I've been curious about this one. I really want to hear you guys answer on how you came up with the idea. Originally, we wanted to travel the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that <was crazy. laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but then, you know, we realized we would have to take the car seat with us all the time because, you know, our little guy was, uh, I mean, it was two when we started. Um, and like Evan said earlier, I had the green card. We have a car. We have health insurance here. Mm -hmm. And we had just been watching the Ken Burns um, series on national parks. Right. Okay. And, and, you know, we talked about it and, and Evan said, you know, I've been living in the West, but I've never really seen it. I've never been to Yosemite. I've never been to Yellowstone. I've never seen any of this. And we're planning to go back to Europe after, and we'll never be able to come back for long enough that we're going to be able to travel really to visit, you know, you go for a few days, maybe a week, and then yeah, that's it. Yeah. You, you come back to visit family. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> so, um, so we just thought, okay, we have everything. Um, 
in line. So let's let's just go and do it. <laughs> so cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. What an amazing and I like about the Ken Burns thing. I was wondering about that. Oh, I and his video. I mean, if that doesn't inspire you, nothing does. Like he's just got that style. But speak. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Not son. Sorry, I called you. Oh my God, I'm waiting. Uh, I was wondering <laughs> if before you guys uh, met, if you both uh, separately had the passion for traveling and hiking uh, before mm, you guys got together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've always been into traveling. Um, yeah, for sure. For, I don't know how to head on to that, but it's uh, since the beginning, we've both been big travelers <laughs> and <laughs> ever, you know. Since we've been together since what 2007, eight. We get the same thing, guys. Don't worry about it. We yeah, have yeah. we understand yeah, completely. Yeah, not sure what he wants. I don't know what he this wants. This is a family show. Hi again. Hi. Oh, oh, we gotta bring our screen up. Hi. <laughs> yeah, when we've always traveled together in the past, it's always been, you know, just being outside, traveling, visiting a city for in Europe or just a lot of walking and exploring, I guess, is what it comes down to. So I think we yeah. both had that passion. Yeah, my, my parents always traveled. Even oh. when we were little, they would just leave us with the grandparents and go to Russia and Mexico. And oh. um, and as soon as, um, I, first time I went to England, I was 11. And they just, the, my dad had great deal with, um, so I was going for three weeks and they had, I had English classes in the morning and I was staying in the English speaking family and uh, in the afternoon we had activities. And so I would do that for three weeks. They would put me in a bus in Paris and I would say, I would, you know, I would go somewhere I didn't know with a family I didn't know. And oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And at 11, I could barely speak English. I mean, in French, you take some classes, you know, but it's just, you can count and introduce yourself and then yeah, there's not much you can really say. <laughs> Baptized by fire, you call that. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely true. So I, I did that from 11 to 18. Well, every summer. Oh, That's... every and every summer it was a different family. So actually, uh, I stayed the first year. I was in a in in a different family, and then the uh, in one family, and then the next year I went in a different family, and I found out that I could ask for the same family. So I, w I actually went back to those guys, which were just absolutely wonderful, treated me like their um, granddaughter. They were just the sweetest people. Right. Uh, and oh, cool. uh, yeah, so it really, uh, they told me all the bad words. And, <laughs> 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 and so we've, we've always been, my, my parents always have pushed us to go travel and explore. And, and we traveled with our parents. And it's all, it's always been part of it. Um, we didn't have much money really, <laughs> but uh, because my dad had such a great deal with his work uh, for us to go to, to the UK, then they, we, we took it, you know, they took advantage of it. They were really, you know, I'll, I'll always be grateful for that. Definitely. What a nice experience. I mean, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable experience. I, uh, I'm just wondering how we would feel into it. Like, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of it. Like, it was, I mean, it must be so, I don't know. I'm Looking back to, yeah. now, it, it, you know, uh, obviously it, it was a great experience. As a child, when you were uh, doing that every summer, yes. uh, were you... Uh, Did you think it was such a great thing yeah, at the time? Yeah, were you stressed? Or, like, I just wonder, like, for it would be amazing for our son, for example, because he's your age to do the same thing. But then I wonder, well, how does it feel? You know, like it's kind of the parent child thing. Yeah. So how did it feel when you were a child? It was fine. I mean, I knew I could tell the people cared about me. So I was not I wasn't scared. Right. Um, the only issue was communication, really. And, and I, I was very, very picky when I was young. So they would serve me a typical British meal, you know, with cauliflower and a big piece of meat, and I was a vegetarian, and, oh, <laughs> and oh, I didn't oh. like cauliflower, that would make me sick, and so I would just eat that one potato they had put, you know, on the plate, and and they, they, they called the, the organization thinking I was homesick or something, they really oh. freaked out. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, my. Oh. 
And so my, the organization called my mom and she was like, no, she's good. She never eats anything anyway. Just give her toast and jelly and she'll be fine. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were, they were very understanding and Oh my wow. God. I never it's felt I, I never felt scared. It was just more, you know, it kind of forces you to get out and if you want something while well, you you're on your own, so you have to Definitely. do it. Definitely. And, and yeah. I think it really helped shaping my personality today. Uh, do you find it help you with uh, learning uh, language as well? Oh yes. Definitely. Yeah. It speeds up the process a lot when you're immersed. <laughs> oh, so much, so much. And it's so funny because even after being for so many years in the States, sometimes I still have a couple of words that come to me in, in British English. Oh. Even though I haven't been in the UK for uh, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> that's like Xenia. Xenia learned British English. So yeah. when she was here at first, she was looking for the chemist and stuff like that and those kind of names. And uh, mm -hmm. not too much so anymore. I think. Yeah, sometimes every so often. But yeah, it's it's harder at first because it's like, well, it's English. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, uh, Some of understand. <laughs> yeah. But then again, that's like the the the, the Quebecois here versus Parisian. And even growing up here, my French was more proficient, but now it's amazing how quickly you can lo not lose the language completely, but maybe it's more lose the confidence in mm -hmm. speaking it, I find. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you get that with English, maybe be just before when you first came to the States or. Well, my work, my work was all English. So oh, okay. that actually that was, I feel like in my life I've been thrown in situations where it's kind of like, okay, you have to figure it out. So just yeah. figure it out. <laughs> I love it. No, <laughs> so, uh, but I've definitely. I mean, I remember when I when we started dating. When we started dating, we were we would watch movies in English, and I would understand forty five percent of the movie, and he would laugh at things, and I would be like, <laughs> "Yeah, I can relate to that because I I went learning English since I was like three, but it's different when you actually have to think and talk at the same time." And your native language is, is get, getting in the middle of that. So although you think you know the language before you come, it's a whole different story once you start living in it. <laughs> For sure. I always tease her that once she gets tired, she starts trying to do the <clears throat> Of course, you know, expressions or jokes are the two worst things to translate because they'll <laughs> never come out properly. And I find once she gets tired sometimes, she starts doing these like half Latvian, half English. And it's like the toaster always flies west when the whale is dancing. Like, it's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Are you high? Or, you know, like, like it's, it's those kind of things that come out. Or the you come for the why was. Like, everything is jumbled. It's like, I'm going to bed. It's, <laughs> I can see what she's really talking about. Well, but you adapt some of them too. Like, my yeah. head is like a bucket to you can say now. I know. Well. You got me saying stuff that I can't believe is coming out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> or a hedgehog in a fog. You know? Yes, it's, yes. It's Every, so within <laughs> Latvia, everything comes back to a hedgehog for some ungodly reason i don't know why <laughs> evan do you find that uh, she's uh alexander still using the the french expressions but in english um probably not as much um you know she speaks uh french to our little ones so i do hear them um you know you know every day i guess mm. so but you know translating over to english no i wouldn't say as much she's she's pretty fluent now <laughs> that's good though <laughs> yeah exactly i shouldn't say that i'm gonna make a sound she is good at it it's just i know when she's tired sometimes i find yeah. that's when it comes out <laughs> and so i i love it like she always since we met she used to say uh, i love you much instead of you know i love you very much and that was the one thing i always begged her never to stop saying because that's <laughs> her so <laughs> Oh, I flashed for a second and somebody disappeared. I clicked the button. <laughs> it's just Evan now. So I got Evan on the now hot we seat. Have you on a hot <laughs> seat. seat. That's yeah. right. So, what was your feelings about France when you were there? Um, so I had done a study abroad during my undergrad, um, and you know it takes uh, some time to getting used to with the language. Um, and then uh, you know when I did my study abroad at that point, yeah, and even the masters, you know, there's both in. Both in English, you took some French classes, but you mostly just learn. You know, I was taking French at the university and everything, and 
you know, learning outside, but it's definitely a culture shock, you know, coming from the U S to, mm -hmm. to France. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it will definitely be a culture shock when we go back again. Uh, there's this, but, uh, you know, you get used to it. Uh, I ended up uh, working over there for a bit, uh, living over there. So I spent a couple of years and probably most of my 20s outside the U.S. in you know, different areas of Europe or, you know, elsewhere. So, yeah, you just got to get used to it. How did you choose France for your university? Uh, just I was getting uh, so one of my degrees I did like French is one of them. And then I did a business one um, mm -hmm. for an undergrad. So. As part of, uh, you know, being a foreign language um, major, you know, you had to go at least for a, a semester. And I think I went for I went for a year. Okay. So I spent a year over there at that point. And then I came back, uh, worked, you know, I moved out to D.C., worked for a couple of years, worked in Haiti. You know, in, in Haiti, it's, you know, Creole and French. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I worked there for a year and a half came back and then at that point came back and did went to went to do my master's after that so that was two years in france so wow. sure. yeah between haiti you know year and a half in france that's like three and a half years you know being in a french you know, yeah. Environment. Yeah. yeah so you're french you have no problems at all then at this point i'd say uh it's it's definitely gotten rusty since we've been back in the u.s you know we spoke mostly English between each other. And, you know, I understand the majority now. You know, I used to be a lot better speaking, but, you know, with us speaking English as a common language, since mm -hmm. she was working in English during the day, um, that just became the common language between us. Right. So, and you know, I don't speak French. You know, just words here and there are phrases now, but I used to be a lot better. <laughs> but it will come back to you. I mean, it's there. Back. You know, just yeah, give me like six to eight, 12 months and I'll be back in it. Oh, yeah. I mean, even, even three months, you know, into it and you'll see like a huge, huge difference. Yeah. It's, you'll still have a, the odd word, but for the most, it's mostly a confidence thing. Yeah. You know, like I, for myself now with French, I find it easier with somebody I don't know because mm -hmm. Xenia and I did it is English and what we do is English. So. Yeah. <clears throat> if I go order something to eat, I'm okay most of the time and doing all kinds of things. But if it's somebody I know quite well, I find I stumble more because I'm more probably shy of making mistakes. Mm -hmm. Or if I don't know them, I don't worry about it as much. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Same as Latvian. I always felt bad. Like uh, I wanted to learn Latvian, but it's an extremely, extremely hard language. It's um, mm -hmm. It's, it's one of the dying languages. It's only uh, in the branch of ling linguistic uh, tree. Yeah, there's only uh, Lithuanian and, and Latvian on the same branch. Uh, so there are uh, very little, few people uh, yeah. talking in it. So it's more useful to learn Russian. And Andrews actually was and is uh, in the process of uh, getting some Russian learned, which probably would be much more practical. Well, yeah, you could use it in so many more countries. Like if you have French, English, and Russian, you pretty much covered most of the upper part of Europe. So. Mm -hmm. Like in Latvian, it's so like the the airplane is literally called a Lido machine, though. Yeah. Which means flying machine. Like it's still in the. It's like I love it. It's just like they just discovered it, you know, flying over and gave it a name. It's a developed country, and they have a technical. I know she's looking at me with probably no, with the but that language is old. It's almost <laughs> like the same as a uh, Icelandic language, yes. you know. So the roots are very old. Yes, there's some mix of Russian and Swedish and. Uh, just because of uh, our history of being occupied by them, but but really in the roots it is old language. So therefore, yes, it has lots of this <laughs> yeah. straight translation, so to say, of what is the practicality of the item or object. Yeah, that's so. interesting. So uh, when you guys are, when do you guys plan to go back to Europe? Do you have a time yet, or is that just like a loose? Uh, well, so. So our son, he's three, and so he'll start school next September 2019. So by then, we'll be back in Europe. That's the plan. So even before then, maybe like summer, next summer. Wow. So we still have, uh, I guess, another year of, you know, doing what we're doing right now. So we can still see a lot. And, you know, we're planning out, you know, six months from now. So at least we got travel until then. That's but yeah, another year of this. And then. 
No, we'll go to Europe and we'll travel <laughs> there too. Well, that's what I was going to say. Once you're there, I mean, every plane ride is about $15 Canadian. So what, like $12, $10 American. You can fly to almost anywhere in Europe as long as you're traveling light. So yeah. the world's yeah. your oyster. Yeah, we look forward to uh, those cheap uh, airlines and oh. traveling <laughs> People knock them, and it's so obnoxious. It's one of those North American things and that. Well, they didn't give me much room for my legs. What do you want? You're getting a flight for $12 for two hours. <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> Go to sleep and get off and then enjoy the place. Don't. It's not like you need to be served a meal to fly for an hour, you know? Like that's a, I wish it was like that here. My God, we get so ripped off in our flight prices, you know? The, uh, Ryan Airways, you can fly across Europe. What was it? We looked at five cities. Mm -hmm. And it was going to cost us about 250 bucks for the two of us. I mean, what else do you want? You know? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great yeah. part of it. And there's so many amazing places to, uh, to, to see. Where else you said that you spent most of your 20s outside? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so France for a couple of years. Uh, worked and lived in the Netherlands. That was six mm. or seven months. Haiti for a year and a half um missing one i think i don't know if you had those up it's probably half my 20s like what is that five or six five years um yeah between the study abroad and the you know working and living in either haiti or france or netherlands wow yeah. great experience the, I mean, yeah it was a good good time in the 20s oh yeah i'm sure i am sure the lot worse ways to spend your 20s than being all in europe like that so my yeah. hat's off to you <laughs> i had moved out to washington dc um you know right after university so that's always been like my east coast home base so mm -hmm. if I, i'd go there for a year or two then go somewhere else you know abroad for you know a year or two and go, you know is a good good home base for for the time being but <clears throat> And then you know, like Alexandra said, we we just lived there for about five years and before we moved out here and started our travels. Now, where you grew up, was it a smaller town or? Yeah, Coeur d'Alene has I think you know fifty, sixty thousand. Okay. You know, growing up, obviously, it had you know it's growing a lot, so yeah. it had less for sure. Um, and then, but Spokane, Washington is close by just a half hour drive. And that has, you know, a couple hundred thousand, what, two or 300,000, I'd say. Big hub. That was a railway hub at first, right? Spokane? Spokane? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm not, don't quote me on what I think that's where it was first. Uh, the, the town was first built around, I think, but I could be wrong. Anybody in the chat that wants to correct me? Railroad <laughs> <laughs> you know, goes through that area, so. They, I, I grew up in a town of literally 280, so I, yeah, it was a lot less. <laughs> yeah, a lot less. There was a town like a couple of kilometers away, well, what five miles away that probably had about three, four thousand. And there was it was an 80 kilometer drive, no, I'm actually 85 kilometer drive to a McDonald's. Well, <laughs> so, uh, Joey was yeah. saying beforehand, before he left, that he lived in such a small town that you had to get out just to change your mind, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that about sums it. So <laughs> that's why I had such a thirst for traveling, and actually, why I did that first backpacking trip because I'd already been over to Europe for my, I always say my greatest souvenir, Xenia. But I, when I, I always wanted to backpack, <laughs> and my uncle, uh, he did it in the eighties, and yeah. that's in a time when nobody in small towns went anywhere. You know, yeah. if they went like a hundred miles away, they told you about it for days later. You know. <laughs> They found new terrain or something yeah. so he, he passed away a cancer and that's when i started thinking you know because my first wife she hated traveling she never wanted to do it i did it for business but only in mostly in north america so she was going to convince me to do it and since then we've we've been busy and i i always wanted to go to europe that was my dream since i was a kid that was no shaking it i don't know why it was an obsession with me so people ask me sometimes, you know, do you mind turning 40? And that actually when I turned 40 was the best years of my life. I've got to go to more countries, do more things, got to spend it with Xenia more, you know, so. And, um, and, and I mean, I, I loved exploring Canada because uh, we have together been to uh, all provinces. Yep, we've done every province. from Newfoundland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
hope to do this summer. <laughs> yes, I know. I uh, but yeah, it, yeah. it's a, you know, you being with Andrew showed me so much of the diversity of, of Canada, which I'm sure you can see by traveling through states, of course, with states as definitely. well, you know, such a difference of weather, culture, nature, wildlife from one coast to another. And I, and I keep being amazed every time when we go, how different it can be, you know, uh, in different provinces here. And same as with states, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, we lived out your way. We lived out in, well, we lived in Saskatchewan. So we're over in North Dakota. That's where our daughter was born. I used to work in the oil fields for a while out there. So that's when we explored more of the West Coast and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I had been out for business, but I got to do it with Xenia. And it's always fun to do it with somebody who enjoys it. Even if you've seen it before, it makes it more interesting. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was wondering the same for you guys. Like, you know, to get back and see some of your spots. But now to have her with you, you probably like re re-see it i guess is the only word i can think of yeah yeah it's fun and you know now that we're doing a lot of filming and photography um you know that adds another level to you know being able to see it in the future and you know kind of yeah it's pretty cool to, to add that as a you know an extra layer and you guys do fantastic work by the way i really 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 love your editing and stuff like that Michael Freer was, by the way, asking, have either of you been to a formal uh, film school? No, I didn't know anything about, you know, you know, video editing. I, I've photographed for a few years now, but, uh, you know, we just got, uh, we just jumped in uh, this past, you know, what? I don't know. Six just months. Six months. I just got the, you know Adobe Premiere and <laughs> and, started. and just did it. And wow. I don't know. I'm I'm impressed. Well, you I, I really well liked your work. We... <laughs> I don't know if yes. you guys remember one of my first comments. I think it was maybe my first comment when I found you guys, and it was late when I found you guys. Was a this is amazing, and b why do you not have more subscribers? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what uh, Mike Fair Jr. says all the time, too. He's a great supporter of ours. Wow. We love you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. You guys really do fantastic work. And I mean, that's, uh, I, I, it's an absolute pleasure anytime I watch one of your videos. Like, you really capture it. Your timing is amazing. Like, that's what really I'm impressed with is your timing. Okay, thanks. You're really <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, we, we filmed the, uh, I don't know, like, it's just, it's not like, we yeah, we didn't do any planning before. We just go out and have a good time, and we just film along the way, and it works. Okay, I'm going to help you with that one. We're going to do a take two right now, and I'm going to be you when you answer that, okay? Yeah. Take two. Yeah, well, we were working on that for a while, and my wife and I said, you know what, we got our timing <laughs> down on that, and I said, no, we're going to go back and shoot it again, because, you know, I wasn't getting the mood at that time, and, you know, we thought we had a vision for this the whole way, and, you know. You guys are so humble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you're so sweet. <laughs> it is. I really, it's really uh, immersive. That's what it is. It's really good quality, guys. I'm not blowing smoke. Yeah, this. we're not the only one saying. Like Jimmy yeah. was saying it, you know. And there's a uh, lots of the in the chat. If you go back afterwards, you'll see how amazing uh, talking about your uh, editing and video skills uh, as well. So yep. <laughs> yes, it's it's. My hats off to you. Have yeah. you guys been doing it a couple of months? You're 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 really ahead of the game. That's all I got to say onto it. So. All the editing is Evan. I, I give my uh, <laughs> my humble opinion <laughs> on what I think of the video, you know, as he works through it. But he's the one who, you know, yeah. puts it all together, finds the right music, times it with the music, and look for, you know, new ways to, you know, new transitions or things like that. It's really, he, you know, I think he really loved doing it. Yeah, and you know we we had so so while we were in Las Las Vegas, I met up with a friend who's from Canada too, and I known her since France uh, as well. It just happened that we crossed paths, cool. and you know she watches our videos sometimes, and she's like, "Well, Evan, you had like a camcorder back in you know two nineteen what two thousand two thousand one, yeah, uh, you know back in France is this one of those Sony handy cams, but uh, you know I was doing that back then, but we didn't have you know there wasn't a software or availability like there is now for yes folks to do this and uh i don't know everything's so small now so you got a gimbal you got a yep like a gopro type deal and you got a microphone all in one and it's yep. packed and it works and yeah it's pretty cool 
What are you using for uh, on taking your videos and photos? Uh, for, I mean, for photos, it's just yeah, Nikon D610, and we got a couple lenses. Mostly it's just the wide angle lens, I think 16 to 35 uh, Nikon one. And then for the uh, video, it's a uh, Evo GP Pro for the gimbal. So, okay. uh, the Exami E 4K Plus for the camera. So it, it has the same specs kind of as the uh, GoPro Hero 6. You know, you can shoot 4K at 60 frames. Oh, um, that's excellent. So yeah, it does all that stuff from what I understand or from what I heard. Has the same sensor, just maybe a different lens, but it looks fine, you know. Well, it does the job. Oh, right. definitely, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Great. clear. I still can't get over you doing it in a couple of months. I am. I not often I say it on this channel. I'm really impressed. I really, really am, and I've just grown ten times more impressed finding this out. So yeah. I, then, I, uh, yeah, we, we don't talk much on our. It's probably something we need to work on, but that's why we have so much music behind. I don't know, but we do have. Yeah, like the microphone is one of those sure. Sure, Mike Pro or something like that, and we just attached that to the gimbal. It, it's a pretty nice, pretty handy setup. But uh, when we do want to talk, <laughs> but most of the time it's just filming and walking. <laughs> well, when we when we when we put on the sound, you, we attached it to the gimbal and to the to the action camera, and so when you use you know when you want to turn it it's not as smooth you know it kind of like yes. gives a little uh, jerk to the camera so that's why we don't we don't always have the microphone on so if we want to say yeah. something it's rare sometimes it happens but it's rare that the mic is on and we're actually like really completely spontaneous about yeah. it <laughs> well i get you on that one i mean you guys have seen now i think you guys have seen a, some of my cinematic stuff like we never talk i do the complete same as you guys so when we first live streamed, everybody was shocked because nobody knew if we were a man or a woman, if there was 10 or 20, if we we're human or not. You know, everybody kind of had their guesses because <laughs> she would answer to a girl's channel and like, oh, I love that shade 37 of blue lipstick, whatever. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember when I was driving the truck out west. So nobody knew what we were. We're like an anomaly on the web, you know. So the night we went on live stream, I was like, oh, I get it now. There are two of them, their husband and wife. <laughs> 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 like, that's why it's so weird for us to do a live stream because we've always said that we had no intentions of ever doing anything in front of a camera to me it's the still hits me if i see what i'm doing i'm like a baby when they learn how to walk they're great until they realize they're walking i can do this until i look over and see a camera and then i feel like uh oh i don't know what to say <laughs> i clam yeah, up same. Yeah, okay. we're we're not naturals, that's for sure. <laughs> You're doing really good because I know you were nervous at the beginning. You're doing absolutely fantastic. You see, it's just asking the right questions and letting everybody get comfortable. So, and you guys are doing spectacular tonight. Thanks. I mean, it's really is like, you know, talking with friends. Uh, uh, we've been watching, you know, your lives and oh. really enjoy your work, guys. You know, and it's so funny how when you see people often even if you don't talk to them you know you just see them on the screen and we you know we have this awesome community like i said mike you know yankee and pam and emma and, and the gang and there's um happy trails hiking that are awesome people too and you know you just see them through their videos and you see so many videos you kind of feel like you know them in a, yes. you know in a way they're not strangers anymore so when you when you leave a comment you're actually leaving it as oh wow that was really cool what you're yes. doing like you know woo -woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> i agree with you you nailed it right there that's the whole point that's the whole point why these live streams why we did them was we always figured this was the next level for people to be followers for years is to get to know somebody better in an hour you can learn so much about a person and it will always be different when you answer them when you watch their videos or uh, reply to them so and that's uh you guys have been awesome supporters of us as well. I want to take that moment too to thank you guys so much for that. I you know it's a real pleasure. Honestly, <laughs> it's just easy. <laughs> you make it easy, guys, to you know watch you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. No, and that's what I was saying. You know, people like you know, let's like some people are shy and they give it all kinds of names. Let's call it what it is. If you want to get monetized, you need a thousand subscribers. You got to eat it up, and you are going to get some that don't care about what you do. But instead of losing sleep about it to me, I got over the thousand, and that's when I became very, very picky. 
and the last 500 have been the ones that I've really, of course, I got some more that will pop in. I won't chase anybody away. But this is where I've gone to channels like yours now, looked at your subscribers, and went back like even a couple of months mm -hmm. and looked at who replied. Because I'm like, okay, I know they're a good channel. I see these ones keep replying to them. Maybe they will like what we do. So now instead of like a short reply, now I have a long one that says, you know, I love what you do, something very personal. And then it explains what we do, you know, because now I want to bring, and I think even our channel, I've been quite proud of that. I think we bring in a lot of the cream of the crop. A lot of these people come back time and time again. They truly support. They don't just say sub me, sub me, sub me. They actually want to know what you do. And that's good because like you guys are a specialty channel. I think specialty channels did great in the groups. But it's nice to have a bit of that gray area. And you could have a guy who builds uh, Mustangs for a living but also likes to hike, you know. They have dabbled in that side as well, or a guy that's into knives or things like that. Oh, they that's... look like us. That's why I wasn't switching. Oh. <laughs> they look <laughs> like such a happy talking. couple. <laughs> so, yeah, they can hear me. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so I, that's what I think, too, is great about this. Like, it was so nice tonight to have so many of the community come out to support you guys. And for some of the guy, the people in our community that usually come here to get to know them as well. Yes, you yes, do have a great are. community too. Yeah, they are. Well, you guys are part of it. I mean, you guys make the show. You really do. It's the guest and the people in the chat. We just give a forum. We're 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 like a byproduct of the whole thing. I call it. You know, you guys make it. So we owe it all to you guys. That's teamwork. That's right. That's right. I like that. I can live with that. So you guys got lot. So yeah, a couple of months. We were just talking while you were away about going to Europe and uh, probably by next year, and saying you'll be able to travel lots through there. Is there any countries in Europe that you're looking to see that you haven't been to yet? Um, for me, there are lots of countries I want to see that are not on everybody's radar. Yeah, like I would love to see Poland and Armenia. Yes, and uh, Georgia. I love it. There are, there are just all those um, kind of you know, little countries that are not yet filled with tourists and where you, you know, you're going to scramble even if you speak English because uh, there aren't so many people speaking English. Oh, Albania also would be one of them. And yeah, it's just, I think that's what attracts me right now. I don't know about you or I think you're pretty open to Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. open. I'll go <laughs> wherever. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've done a bit of traveling in Europe in the Balkans and yeah, probably visit more of Eastern Europe. And I mean, I'll, I'll go anywhere. Every, every, yeah, every you'll, have to go, you'll have to go to Latvia sometime. That's why I said, yay. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. One, yeah, absolutely. One day mm -hmm. we'll get there. Yeah, so I'm pretty open you know, I like seeing the different cultures, eating different food. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, wherever. I always said it wasn't the reason why we got together, but it was always a nice byproduct that Xenia was from Latvia. Because I'm like that. I always like going off the beaten trail. I always wanted those places that nobody usually goes. I mean, I love Paris and London. We're all they're all great, but there's something about these other places. You know, you feel a little more distant, a little more where not every tourist has been and stuff like that. <laughs> off the beaten path, so to speak. You know? Yeah, you, you feel inside a community. I mean, you feel like you're being sucked in a little bit, yes. you know, getting the, the oh. feel of their everyday life. Well, the name of our uh, channel, you guys have probably heard already, Pusha, it is a town in eastern Latvia where her mom grew up. It's about 50 kilometers from the border. I mean, when I go to a corner store there, let me tell you, there's nobody in English to help me. And all the <laughs> all the locals, because they don't get many tourists. It's not that they're like yokels or anything. They just find it no. amazing. They just stand around and watch me try to order it's stuff. Very, very small village, <laughs> so, yeah. And they find it entertaining to see, okay, how far is this guy going to go before he get, like, gets lost in his own words here? <laughs> so, which is cool. I love it. And, and it's nice, though. Like, I mean, I can, for a guy that grew up in a town in eastern Quebec of 280 people, now can drive into a country 7,000 kilometers away. I can drive across the country, go in all these little towns and not be completely lost. I feel is such a phenomenal thing. Like, I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any um, upcoming travels in Canada or in Europe uh, or places that you want to visit? Ask I... me. Ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't planned. <laughs> Yeah, and it's all on a map, and it's only this long in the map, so that means we can do it in about an hour. So, 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, me right now, I want to do Portugal. I want to do Portugal, Italy, and Morocco. And I've done every country from Iceland to Italy. That's what I'm missing for Europe. And then I'm then it's Russia and Ukraine and Belarus. Mm. And Xenia definitely wants to do Newfoundland. That's first on the list. Yeah, in Canada, I want to definitely go to Newfoundland this summer. In States, I would like to go to New York and uh, maybe like Chicago or one of those places. And then uh, in Europe, I would like to do that Mediterranean and uh, drive through from Portugal to Italy with a little uh, Kia car. <laughs> yeah, there's. He's not bad enough. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, a reality show. Let's just see how hard we can possibly make this and see if Andrew survives or not. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and and, and, and <laughs> Belarus uh, is also on our list. Yeah, that's one of. The I list. really want to do Belarus because I'm a huge Soviet history buff. Because that was kind of my war growing up, you know, if you want to call her my conflict. And Belarus is the closest thing to seeing Soviet time where everything is still called like corner store or a gas station. There. So that's, uh, and they've just lifted the uh, visa restrictions. Yeah, for Canadians, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to. We, you can only fly in, uh, no train either, right? Only fly? Yeah. And you have to stay less than, I think it's three or five days, but five now days, five yeah. days, you can, no visa uh -huh. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Visa was like five hundred dollars Canadian before that. It was really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to go? If you yeah, yeah, I really want to go. I really, truly, without any doubt, want to see it. Like I say, I'm I'm a huge fan, and it drives their friends crazy because a lot of them don't like talking about Soviet time, yeah. understandably. But when I'm there, that's all I want to talk about. And they're like, "You stop putting that on Facebook, please." Like, yeah, we are more because than obviously that. we still have a lot of relics and, and leftovers left in Latvia from that time. Uh, but nobody likes to be associated with Russia anymore, obviously. Uh, mm. So when you mention, you know, USSR and post-Soviet country, then it's like, yeah, yeah, but like, forget about it. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> Although it is still a lot of, uh, you know, it has impacted a lot and still has a fact. I want, I just want to say, you know, for five hundred dollars, you can drive from Portugal to Italy. Yes, I know, that's right. I know. There you go. Thanks again. And Thank that, you. Thank and you. I'll win a prize, and it'll be like the European reality shows. I'll win like a, a free drive myself see, back. I don't see any different <laughs> than driving from uh, Saskatchewan to Montreal when we were moving here. The same thing. It's all four lane highway, and you get about six towns in Canada. Wow, that's it. Have wine, <laughs> yeah. drink wine. Yeah. And it would be beautiful but it would be murderous at the same time <laughs> so it's a mix of both yeah oh i forgot to say i don't drive yeah he yeah. Is. <laughs> yeah yeah you know the you know the reality shows there's always another catch at the end of the wheel <laughs> so yeah so it's called andrew's corpse is the name of the game <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, just don't do it in the summer. It's horrible. Oh my God, I've I actually would die. I've done something similar. I've done the south of Spain and Portugal in June and July, and that was <laughs> oh. way too hot. So we did don't. Barcelona in July, and I yeah, swear to God, God, I was like a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. definitely. Probably fall would be great. Yeah. And people, we were talking about that last night. A lot of people don't realize Montreal is just as hot as it is cold. Like we have minus 40 in the winter, we have plus 40 in the summer. It's yeah. literally the same as Miami. It's a very humid, hot summer. So, uh, yeah, everybody thinks it's like igloos up here. Believe me, there's a couple of months it's anything but. <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, she found the cold, too, when she first got here. She wasn't used to the cold. But... but it was minus 45 the first day I got <laughs> no, off the 38, plane. minus 38. Well, 38, 45. <laughs> Who sees the difference? The first time we got out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> the airport. I, I didn't understand where I am. <laughs> I knew it's cold, but that was a different cold. <laughs> and then oh. afterwards, we moved to Saskatchewan, which was minus 50 in winter. So. Well, they're in that area where he grew up yeah. with that, so you know it can get pretty cold out there, too, like the flatlands <laughs> and all that, man. Yeah. But it's a dry cold out where you guys, like in that area more. Here, it's the humidity that gets to you as well. So, like, minus 35 here is the same as minus 50 out there, I find, a lot of times. I know I'm talking Celsius right now because I'm awful at converting. So, yeah, I think the the, the 40, 40, 40, 40 Celsius, forty um Fahrenheit. I think that's the that's right. Yeah, so somewhere in that of, area. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of, it, it's cold. <laughs> yes, there you go. See, there's a perfect translation. I like this guy. Yeah, he cuts to the chase. That's my kind of guy. Well, by the way, TriStar Travelers and down the rabbit hole is on my side too here. Yeah. So, thank you, girls. Well, of course, of course. Yeah. 
We have a running joke here. The women always do that. Their uteruses become like care bears and come together to overpower me. So <laughs> I'm just going to have to suck it up and move along with them. So. Thank you. <laughs> so thanks once again, all. I appreciate it for the 4,000-kilometer drive on windy 50-kilometer roads. <laughs> Good to have you supporting me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get me to push the car next one. I'll be the oh, change the tire. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Well, it wouldn't be a game without the busted tire. Blowing right. it on the side of the road in a, in a town where nobody speaks English. All kinds of great stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be fun. I was fully, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I know. This is so heartwarming. I might start to cry here at some point. <laughs> calm down, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Care Bear Countdown. I love that. I love it. Yeah, that's great. That sums it up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my. I have a few questions, Nick. Can, can yep. we get to the questions? Let's go to the um, questions. I, I asked already some uh, that were in the chat, but I still have some uh, left. So let me just open this up here. Um, so uh, what would be an app that you would uh, like to use for uh, hiking? I know uh, the people in the chat already discussed some of the options, but do you use uh, an app for hiking? No, we we check we check out the trails before we go. So we read about them oh, and we, we watch, yeah, alltrails.com. Okay. That's what we usually refer to, uh, but if, if we can find a website from locals who actually, you know, do a lot of hikes in the area, we'll definitely hit that uh, that website too. Uh, we yeah. we don't use we don't use apps or GPS or anything. We're old school no. maps. And like, oh. Yeah, well, I mean, and National Park Service usually yeah. has you know all their hikes listed, and you mm -hmm. know, like before we had um, our kid, you know, we could go on long hikes. So say you know, 11, 12, 13 miles. Right now, carrying the baby carrier, which is like forty pounds. What is that? Like maybe yeah, twenty kilos or something like that. You know, we're limited, and you know, we start to hurt after you know oh. five, six miles. I'd say is would six miles would probably be a max for a hike. Yeah, at one time. Yeah, because we would do fifty fifty. Yeah. You know, when his shoulder hurts, I'll take over. Or if it goes up, that's for him, and when it goes down, that's for me. <laughs> So, so That's a, <laughs> there you see where she's giving the advice look at you see <laughs> yeah. when she, we started when we started our trip i was like i'm telling you i'm not carrying this thing it's way too heavy <laughs> six months into it we do 50 50. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it all sounds like a good idea when it's on paper <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah so okay. just based on that limitation of uh mileage you know we, we we look at the the hikes online and then we'll pick and choose which which ones are popular or which ones we want to do yeah and we don't really mind if they are hard or you know as long as it doesn't as long as we can go with the baby carrier you know if right. there's too much scrambling or something like that then we're going to avoid but if you know we we did grand canyon yeah we did uh, angel's landing in zion angel's landing in zion we did you know we did the a pretty uh, intense hike in Yellowstone, also where we saw that cougar. I don't know if you saw the video. That was amazing, mm -hmm. by the way. That was really cool. How did you feel in that one? <laughs> it was pretty cool. I mean, yeah. it's just kind of a rush to see one live. So I just came up over a ridge, and there it was. That's something that not everybody can say they've seen. I thought that was so amazing. Yeah. Right. Yes. And I mean, we were lucky just caught his dinner because we <laughs> saw yesterday that two bikers were attacked in Cascades, in Cascades uh, yeah. National Park, okay. North National Park, and one of them got killed. Yeah. Oh, no. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, thank God that, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, it could have turned out well. For yes, you exactly. Yes, it's, well, that's part of wildlife <laughs> well it is sometimes you know that is a product That's of crazy, it you're though. you're you know people bad. think something's in the parks they think it's like a controlled thing where they even control the animals but i mean you are exposing yourselves when you're doing that for sure try start is saying angels landing with the carrier you are superheroes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we heard that a lot <laughs> yeah we got we got a lot of i think that's the trail we did where we got the most like Almost anybody on that trail mm -hmm. commented on the on this yeah. and saying he was a, like an awesome dad. Someone <laughs> said, "I want to be a dad like you when I have a kid." Yeah. <laughs> um, has there ever been a trail that you've ended up onto that you, because like carrying the baby and stuff like that, was just too much? You had to turn back. 
No, not never with the baby carrier. We had to turn back, I want to say at least twice, but it was for weather reasons. Yeah, that's understandable for sure. Yeah, one, yeah, one was in Park City. Mm -hmm. You remember when we went to this, there was an old factory and we, yeah. we went to the factory and it was a loop so we could actually hike a, a lot further, but that it had rained a couple of days before and when we arrived, it was snowing, which is still okay. Oh my but God. then it got really muddy. <laughs> and oh. so we had this thick mud under our shoes and of course our little guy decided he wanted to walk that day mm -hmm. and so his pants was completely covered in mud and <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that's when we decided to turn around <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> that, that's always fun that makes for a great day <laughs> Yeah, we, we were careful about the hikes we do. If we felt so when we went to Angel's Landing, we went up. We were not sure if we were going to go all the way uh, to the end. And we saw uh, a couple with a baby carrier and, and a baby that was much younger than our son. And we asked them, we said, did you go to the end? How was it? And they said, yeah, we did it. It was fine. <laughs> so <laughs> that was just, you know, the last um, check we needed to, to get to actually yeah. do it. I mean, that was... You do some scrambling yeah. and it was pretty intense, but it was, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, our legs were sore for a couple of days after that one. Yeah. I can well imagine. Well, hats off to you for that. So you made it and, and you're you're no less, less for wear. So you guys are definitely troopers. I like that. I like your spirit. Yeah, we're not we're not scared of, uh, strenuous. of, of strenuous. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, you take the world head on. Good for you guys. It's inspirational. Uh, yeah, uh, and um, what what to, for somebody who wants to try uh, start hiking? Uh, what would you have to pack in a bag, like, or what is a must uh, take on items for somebody who wants to go hiking? That's a good question. Well, it depends if it's if they have children or not. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot lighter without children. Yeah, it's an extra thirty pounds if you're bringing children. <laughs> Plus the snacks, plus the drinks, the plus the diapers, the wipes, the trash yeah. bag for the dirty diapers. Well, uh, well, let's say without children, because I know with children it's a bit different story. It, it, sometimes you just have to take the whole house. But <laughs> uh, but uh, just for adult, let's say uh, that wants to go start hiking, uh, what what is a must-have items in the backpack? Let's see, I, I mean, not much when uh, well. Uh, snacks yeah, i mean obviously water. i mean but more than you think you're going to need just in case i don't know you get lost or something same thing for water band-aid yeah. in case you hurt yourself yeah i mean we pack we, we should, could probably do a video on that once we, yeah. we never that really opened up really backpack, video. but, but uh, yeah we should probably just open up our backpack and see we've got a i know we got a ton of stuff because yours is super heavy and <laughs> we got they can hear your back full. Um, I'm a mule. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, we, we have a lot of gear. Like, yeah. we always have the tripod yeah, with us, and it's a big tripod. tripod. Yeah, with all our photography stuff, yeah, tripods. Well, that's another thing, too, exactly. Yeah, no, but I just wondered if there is a necessity must-have items without which you uh, shouldn't go, uh, like, on a hiking trail. Those are things you like, the water, the food. Yeah. Uh, the map, map, uh, map. Whether, whether it's on your phone or you know hard copy or whatever, you always need a map because there, are, there are some trails even in national parks. Some trails are really badly um, indicated. I yeah. don't know how to do that. And so, the really sometimes you're really not sure which way you want to go. And right, you read before that some people got lost because they took a left instead of a right or. It's easier to do the loop from the left, you know, a counter clock or then the opposite. Then right. you have, you know, so be prepared for that. I mean, yeah, definitely getting a map or taking, you know, a picture of the map at the beginning of the trail. That's a good point, too. Yes, that's a very good point. Yeah, we that. always do that. Because uh, even if we have the hard map, then sometimes the map they have at the beginning of the trail is way more detailed and they show you more trails you can go to if you want to explore you know, extend your hike or um, mm -hmm. they will show you more detail, definitely. So that's, yeah, that's that's always been very useful to us. Mm -hmm. you bring Otherwise, no, we, we travel really light. We're yeah. not very good. 
well lighter in that sense yeah, yeah. i mean if you yeah that country camping would be a lot yeah. different but yeah you know, it's just mostly full full of uh baby stuff right now and mm. you know like it layers you know if yeah. you're going up a high elevation mm. you know you can start off in a t-shirt and then put on your um soft shell yeah soft shell or something like that well, yeah. yeah, the weather can change so much. The height, not just because of the height, but I mean, the weather itself can change in a moment's notice too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's definitely something to check before you go to what's yeah. going to be the weather. And it, yeah, I mean, maybe not so much. We've been in the desert for so long, where we've just been like either you know sunny, like short short sleeves, or you know a long sleeve, or with a fleece. It's cool. Um, but now that we're like in Yosemite and we're going to start going up north more, and we'll, you know we'll go to like. Olympic National Park, and I'm sure you know we got to probably always take our um, hard shell jacket mm -hmm. <clears throat> just in case it rains. Mm -hmm. um, you just never know in this type of so it's it's going to be a little bit more different than what we've been used to the past mm -hmm. you know, five months. Yeah. We're, we're in more more diverse conditions. Because <laughs> even traveling, like not hiking, like something I've learned now at this point is is the freedom of traveling lighter. And that's such a thing that plagues especially North Americans when they travel for no matter what reason. Like, it's always this, like, pack for everything that could ever happen, and it's good to be prepared. But sometimes, like, people even go for a trip and they pack for every season that could never even hit a place, you know? Like, it's such a way down to it, and I realize that now, and I'm such a, a promoter now of packing light for that simple reason. Mm -hmm. And literally my two-week trips when I go to Europe now, I wear one heavy – I have one heavy sweater – three to four t-shirts i buy a bag of walmart socks and i just start tossing them as i go you know like i have the 10 pair and and whenever i'm somewhere i'll wash them and just keep going like that and it's so much nicer to be able to get off a plane or a train or a drive and not have to feel like you got to spend two hours checking luggage everywhere you go oh, yeah. and you, you know one pair of jeans as well in my bag plus one on and just like you know rotating them putting them out you know, a train, I learned how to wash, you know, clothes and get them hung up for the night. By the next morning, they're dry. It, it, it mm -hmm. frees you from so much, like, that you can enjoy more of your travels and less of taking care of stuff, I find. Oh, that's true. You know? Because some people, it's scary. They bring, like, eight luggage bags to go for a week somewhere, and they're, like, clumping at the airport or wherever, and things are falling. And I'm looking at them now, and I'm like, oh, my God, you got to try the SOA. Just try it once and see, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, for us, I mean, we still packed way too much clothes anyway. And we have big luggage and we just, we are almost never empty uh, going it to get more clothes because we're hiking all the time. So we're wearing hiking clothes all the time. I have one pair of jeans <laughs> <laughs> and we have different shoes, but to face kind of all the different seasons, you know, we have like water shoes and lower hiking shoes, higher hiking shoes. But that's true. You just keep on wearing the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, it's that's exactly it. I, I have a jacket that I've I my wife wants me to get rid of. She bought it for me when we got married, and I hate to let it go because it's been in over twenty some countries with me. It's been my pillow. It's been my blanket. It's been with me when I went up in the you know in the mountains in Switzerland. It's been all these places with me. And I don't want to let it go. And I usually I'm not sentimental to material things, but that jacket is one of the few things I don't know if I can ever let it go now. Maybe I'll get you it. You should frame it. it. What's that? You should frame it. You know, like those jerseys, like they do for you know yeah. a soccer player or like football player, or whatever. Yeah, I could do that. Stand up for me. Or get her to make it into a pillow or something <laughs> pillow, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always there, so. No, I know, I know. And it looks awful now because the pockets have really the, the the elbows have really let go. Like, yeah, I can't wear it out anymore. I've come to the kind of the sad and conclusion. And usually, it's not the most emotionally attached to a person to to things like yeah, that. You know, not a I bit. would be more like that. But the, but yeah. the jacket, uh, I think, is very symbolic for that. Like, I, I don't buy anything. I don't buy anything. I'm not into tourists. You know, it's me. It's my pictures and memories, and that's what I'm good with. Like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah you know on, on all the hikes we've been doing pretty much i wear the exact same jacket you you can rewatch all our videos and if it's cold then i have like this thick blue uh sweater but otherwise it's my purple sweater no matter where i go oh, so we got that in common i like that i like that 
I understand. <laughs> if it works, why? You know, it's not a fashion line or anything. You want to be more comfortable and enjoy, you know, instead of looking, you know, well, what's wrong there. Well, that's what Rick Steves is always like. I mean, yeah. I always, he's always preached that since the beginning that, you know, that's a problem in North America was just like overpacking all the time. And he has a great line I always remembered. He says, everybody always asks him, where's the best place to take my kids when we go to Europe? And he always says to the parents' house on the way to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and we've brought our kids, so we didn't listen to him. I still think that's one of the greatest lines I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Even after all these years, the guy still got it. You know? But we just were uh, discussing in the chat a little bit about that. Uh, we've done the rabbit hole. And um, Doug, uh, Doug um, to traveling with kids, you know, and, and down the rabbit hole was saying, yeah, it's just so slow hiking with kids, you know, yeah. every little leaf and stuff. And then I call it mindful hiking because you, you stop and you look at the leaf and you talk about it. You know, it's a different hiking. It's called mindful yeah. hiking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but that's, that's kind of the reason why we're actually carrying home so much. It's because we really want to go and see something. You know, if you if you have to walk three miles to a waterfall, if you stop at every stream, you know, and there are like twenty on the way, you're just never going to get to that waterfall. So you you look at the first three streams, and then you're like, okay, you're going to baby carrier. We need to move on a little bit. You can play when we arrive. You know. Did you, you can hear that, Xenia? Did you hear what she just said? <laughs> I want you to watch the replay after. <laughs> in Latvia, they stop like, oh my god, I hear there's a German rubber boot here in the corner. We gotta stop and have a picnic and look at it. <laughs> they never get anywhere. <laughs> uh, we actually got a great reward. Um that was in Sequoia. We went to Sea Falls. Um uh, the Tokopa Falls in, in Sequoia National Park. And so he, he didn't walk too much. We put him in the baby carrier because we really wanted to get there. It was going to maybe rain, so we wanted to go quick. And then when we got there, there was this huge marmot that was just going around the place. And so wow. that was, he loved it. That just kept him entertained. We stayed there for like an hour, an hour and a half. I can't remember. Because oh, yeah. You know, we don't mind staying wherever we arrived for a yes. really long time. And, and he had just so much fun. Well, that's great. <laughs> well, that was one of those hikes where you, you know, we felt oh, we felt less guilty not making him walk on the way because he actually got <laughs> really good fun when we got there. You guys are amazing. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> they do get into it. I mean, they're not going to get all of it right away. I even look at my kids when they're younger sometimes and think like, you know, you don't even know yet what you've seen. But when you're 20 and you look back at this, you'll get it. You know, you will truly, truly appreciate what you've just seen in front of you. And that's a good gift for them too. I mean, you know, it, they don't have to understand every single thing they see at this moment. It's the big picture that counts. Absolutely. Uh, do you see it with their with your kids like do they appreciate it like do they travel or what's uh yeah like the older one more i would say our daughter was pretty young at the time but she I, didn't mind though uh, no I, I don't think she fully understood what we are doing so to say that it is part of traveling you know but yeah. she didn't mind she doesn't ask you know uh when it's gonna end are we there yet there's no questions like that because they're used to traveling to our uh in-laws i apologize if you guys have seen this already but i want to show you something as an example of that this picture here oh you know you know where that is if you look to your right here, and if you look to your left, this is the tri point. Behind us is Latvia, that's Belarus, and that's Russia. Oh, wow. And this is somewhere that almost nobody gets to see. If we had got caught there at the beginning, we would have had a 3,000 euro fine each, and we would have been deported for five years from Latvia. Oh, wow. This took every bit of bargaining that we could muster with a border cross scourge because nobody's supposed to be there whatsoever. <gasps> And this is a tree of hope in the middle, and it's that mound is made from the ashes of 40 villages that were destroyed in World War II. And right behind them, I'll see if I can zoom in here. This sign here, there's three of them, and one here, 
and one over here, and it's a message of hope. And this one's written written in Belarusian, this one in Latvian, and this one in Russian. Oh wow! And there's the entrance into Latvia, and that's the uh, the lime tree with the walkway. There's the actual border crossing. There's the three points, and that's just police tape that divides it. And he was only eight when he was there. My daughter was four. There's there's Belarus inside, and they're walking through. That's the gate you walk through. And it was a road that we had to get permission. It's only used by the army and border cross. This was the road was built when the tanks came in in World War II to oh take on the Germans. That's why that road was built. And, oh, those but, yeah. pictures are amazing. There, there's the entrance into Russia right there. It's just that little walkway bridge. It was kind of busted out. They have to do repairs to it. But there's cameras hidden everywhere in the trees. You can see them like every like 30 feet or so there's video cameras everywhere you never there was nobody there that was very eerie and quiet and that's all the all the the national tree so that's why there's poplar here because that's the not the official the natural the official tree of belarus and then the birch of course for uh for russia and they each have their own little walkway like that and this is one of those places where i've seen the kids there that's the whole part of going into russia you can see right there there's the walkway between the birch trees and the little bridge will be right where that orange sign is. And so, yeah, so. Wow, that's such a, a unique place. It's amazing. Well, we were probably one of the last ones to ever get there because now there's a nine-foot fence that the NATO built. Wow. So it was probably one of the last times that anybody's been allowed to go there. So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. That's my favorite place. That was my like awe moment for the kids, and like you know, that's one that place where you'll not you don't even know where you are right now, but you will one day realize just what you got to see that most people never, most people from those countries never get there. Xenia didn't even know it existed. With the no, stuff. I mean, I lived there all my life. I didn't even know it's there. Well, at that time, it wasn't really popular. You yeah, know, uh, wasn't really. Uh, they have one day a year popularized. that they bring in a busload of people from each country, and they meet. But the Belarusians and Russians can shake hands but because they can cross, but the Latvians have to stand on the side of the... Because if you walk one step on the bridge, you've entered the country. It's not in the middle. So that's where he got really stern. He's like, do not let your kids walk on it like at all. Don't put a foot on it because then they can detain you if you put one foot. So, Oh, yeah. wow. He got really like, like straight-faced and like no fooling around. Because that yellow tape on the poles, that's the border. If you walk past that, even that too, you're already entered the country. So they were very, very strict on that part. But because wow. we, we didn't know, and we drove to that little hut, we turned left and went on this old dirt road, ended up at this old, stereotypical Eastern European wood sold. It's gray, no driveway, just a little trail. And that's when we did the learning process because we found out the last 40 kilometers of Latvia that borders Belarus and Russia, you actually have to have your passport on the all times even to live there. Of course, not Lithuania and Estonia side. But the last two kilometers, you actually need a permit just to even live there that's issued on an annual basis by the government. Oh, wow. So I asked Xenia to get out and ask this old lady we found where it is. And I don't speak the language, but I understand shock. And that's when she asked Xenia, to sh she'll have to show your papers. And she said, what papers? And the woman went white as a ghost. And she's like, you've got to get out of here because if they find you, that's when she told us we get a 3,000 euro fine each and the deportation if you're not from the country. Oh. <clears throat> so we left and I got out and smoked like four cigarettes in a row. We had a little brown Volkswagen rabbit. We're doing like 40 kilometers an hour like this. But you feel like you're flying, you know, because you got a four and an eight year old counting on you not to put them in danger. Mm -hmm. We get back past that two kilometers where the old border is. And I'm sitting there and she's on the phone and I'm like, oh my God, what did we just do to the kids? You know, look what we got them into. And then we, she said, well, go to the border. It's too late to get papers, but go to the border agent and ask them about 20 kilometers away. And we got there, and he was so bewildered why we even wanted to see it. And then I said, well, we're really into Soviet history and blah, 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 blah. And finally, he looked at me with a straight face, and he goes, I like the Edmonton Oilers. He was Russian guy in Latvia, but he liked our hockey team from Edmonton. I didn't know who the hell they were. I know the team. I know nobody on it since Wayne Gretzky played like 30 years ago. And I'm like, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, they're having an all right year. I said, not their best, but not their worst. And I'm winging it. And you'd name a player. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, he showed a lot of potential. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so this went on for about 20 minutes, and I gave him Canadian coins and said, if you're ever in Canada, your first coffee's on me and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then yeah. finally he said, you really want to see this? And I said, truthfully, I said, this was the land I was never supposed to see growing up. And it, it, I, I'm just in, I'm fascinated by the history and I won't break any rules. If we can't go, I won't, but if I can, I would love to. And he said, okay, he said, you're going to go back. You're going to park in front of that booth and you're going to walk the last two kilometers in and told us where to go. And he radioed in and told all the border agents we'd be there. How many of us were there? They're kind of rough ages, what to look for. And, we went, we spent about two hours, I guess. Yeah, it was really interesting, although yeah. it was stressful. And we are kind of known from doing this. Yeah, we kind of push the boundaries sometimes uh, like yeah, that. Not yeah. like we are intentionally yeah. getting into danger, or, or, but it just happens to happen right, <laughs> yeah. right, right on the very last edge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, unplanned, but uh, yeah. I, I just give, wanted to give a shout out to Clardo Martini, who's in the chat. Uh, it's their uh, 31st wedding anniversary oh. today. Happy uh, anniversary yeah, to you. Give a shout out. Uh, happy anniversary. Good stuff. Uh, many more to come. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you guys, is, what are your plans for the very nearest future? I know your further future for France, but uh, like, what is your next destination? And what is your plans for your channel? You want me to next turn? You want me to? Um, oh. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, yeah, for next day. So we're in um, Yosemite right now. We're just going to keep traveling north um, for the next uh, yeah, couple months. So, yeah, we hit like Lake Tahoe, Lassen Volcanic. Then we'll go up to Oregon and Crater Lake, spend some three weeks just hopping in and out. On the, we'll stay on the beach like Beverly Beach State Park, Sea Mount Hood, um, Silver Fall State Park, and then we'll Cannon Beach, then pop mm -hmm. into Washington, Olympic National Park, Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens. Cool. Please uh, take out the video of Mount St. Helens. I I, love, I always wanted to go there. So it looks amazing. Yeah. Then uh, Mount Baker. Mount Baker. It's on the other side of the Cascades. Um, yeah, every, everything was pretty remote in Washington, so we'll just be there four weeks, I think. And then, yeah, we'll loop around to northern Idaho, see some family in Coeur d'Alene, and then start it again, I guess, for another, I don't know, what would that be, like another six months until yeah. we were done? Like so, yeah, so, so like, starting in um, September, it'd be, you know, like Park City and then Moab, and then we haven't, we didn't, we missed New Mexico, so we'll hit New Mexico later this year, and see yeah. some of those parks so, so we've still got a lot of traveling to do and uh yeah on our website or on the youtube channel we usually put like on our banner where we're at in the next destination or the least you know the you know where we're at where we're visiting right now so like yosemite and then we'll say okay lake tahoe's next and then once you're in tahoe we'll we update it we'll, we'll update it we update it each time we get to a new destination <laughs> and uh but yeah, we've got a lot of traveling to do and a lot to see. So it's going to be, I got like videos backed up for like years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be in Europe for three years and still putting out videos from there and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. I'd love to put out more just between work and family and hiking. It's just okay about once a week, twice a week if I'm lucky. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do it um, more often. But uh, maybe in Idaho, I'll catch up a bit and put out more videos then. That's but what I'm until, oh, sorry, go ahead. But until then, it'll just be like, yeah, once every uh, week or one or two a week, probably. That's what I find hard. With. I, and I love the live streams and the people. And this has turned out to be one of the greatest things I think we've ever done. But I still miss editing so much. And I feel like the way you were talking well about your editing, I think we're kind of on the same page. That's kind of always where my passion's been. I love that's where I feel the most creative is putting it together and i see your work and i feel that kind of kindred spirit with your work i think we kind of push ourselves the same way we're a bit of a perfectionist sometimes we like everything lined right to the dot i see you with yeah. your and it's uh 
it's such a, a great feeling like i, I people I, some people do it because they have to i that's my favorite part i almost wish some of people were bringing me their footage and i would be just doing the editing for yeah them. they could sell life is saying that they're gonna start sending it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's just no time that's the hardest part like you know there's just no time for it and the footage backs up more and more yeah know? but don't waste it keep it and and definitely you'll have lots more things to do with it i'm sure and I mean, yeah. you're documenting your little man's uh, life too, yeah, which that's is so a cool. very great part of it, you know, for him uh, when he grows up to see where he went with his parents when he was little. That's yeah. Right. yeah, we have a little passport where we put all the stamps of the national parks. And we, uh, Evan said, you know, we have a, a, a Microsoft project grid where we put everywhere we go and how long we stay and every city, etc. So if he wants, I don't know. I would say maybe it's one of my fantasies that when he's older, he's like, hey, I want to do that tour my parents did with me and I can't even remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> that is so true. I think that's amazing. And I'm sure he's already got the bug from you guys. So I think that's probably going to happen. Yeah, that would be so amazing with their kids, you know, if he has any, yeah. that's for sure. Plus even making some of his own, you know, as mm -hmm. well. He'll mix the two of them and that, that's a perfect mix. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And as for like what's next with the channel, you know, we'll continue to put out um, the videos for the hiking, at least, and maybe diversify a bit, maybe try a couple product reviews. Like, you know, we get Alexandra, she gets, or we get questions about, you know, the, the baby carrier or the, right. you know, the gimbal and, and uh, I don't know, maybe hiking shoes that, you know, we've hiked, you know, hundreds of miles in. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll maybe diversify a bit um, in the future and see how that that works yeah uh, baby uh things definitely are gonna gain you more views and followers yeah exactly mm -hmm. uh, especially baby things for hiking uh you know violet bird was talking about that her channel is not about that at all <coughs> yeah. but her review of two strollers the newer edition and the older edition like gets uh, got like I don't know, 15,000 views or something yeah. crazy like that. Uh, and that's not what her channel is about at all. So definitely something like that would hopefully bring you more to the sunshine because I really think we, I think you agree that you must be more recognized yourself. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. No, no, you guys. Uh, I hope that if you do something like that, it would just bring you more into searches and related videos and things like that. If we didn't have such a good channel, I would give everybody a good stern talking to it, like to be a part of your channel and catch every video, go back and watch your whole catalog. So, but they're amazing. So I know they will already. Yeah. I'll find another channel and we'll go and yell at everybody to go watch you. So. <laughs> no, because I know how it feels when you pour your heart into stuff. It's not that you're looking for 3 billion views or looking to make $10 million, but it is important to be appreciated for the work. And you guys really put the work into it. So that's why it's, it means a lot to me to see you guys growing. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, it's it, now that we've started the YouTube channel, it's really taking all our uh -huh. free time. <laughs> really, we were talking about it last night. So, you know, we sit in front of the computer and I do the social media and, you know, the yeah. comments and, you know, watching our friends videos to see where they've been and trying to find some great hikes from, you know, all, all their videos and, and Evan is working on editing the videos and it's just take so much time. I mean, you yeah. know, guys, you're doing it every day, you know, it's just suddenly you, it's not like we had the social life because we were, <laughs> out and about anyway but we felt like we could one night sit in front of the tv and yeah. just put the feet up and enjoy watching a show or something and this is something we have not done maybe we did it once since we started the yeah. YouTube. Yeah. we <laughs> watch shows but we never know what happened into it we always say we watch these shows and they just they're in the background, in you the get background another, yeah. i could watch them again and probably be like the first time you know but then again, Sunday night where we don't do it, we really do, and this we keep saying it, it's not a lie, we do talk about you guys. It's amazing how much in, an integral part of our lives you guys have become, you know, because so much in the chat and stuff. Oh, I bet you they would like this. I wonder if they did that. Well, maybe I'll go check their live stream for five minutes. Next, you know, we're sitting on other people's live streams and we don't get to see through the week. Because it is a big thing. Like, when we're done tonight, we'll still be two or three hours, like, because they're going to be booking other people. 
I think we're booked like pretty much all of June already. Yeah, like today I spent all day booking people ahead, getting their pictures, getting their about, you know, like getting the schedules all because the mm. challenge is that we are, uh, we always have 8 p.m., right, Eastern, but uh, all our guests are in different time zones. Like uh, this natural yeah. journey was from New Zealand, you know, it's like a whole different day. Yeah. And then you try to 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 schedule them all. So uh, yeah, it definitely, but it, it's part, uh, I guess I, uh, we never really thought about uh, what goes behind it. Yeah, no. I never thought when I was starting photography, how much work is behind it and how less percentage is actual taking pictures and all the other stuff takes out <laughs> so much more, you know? Uh, same as you guys now saying, you know, it, it takes so much time. It never ends, as, as Michael Fayer says. That's why I'm so impressed by specialty channels like you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to pigeonhole you. And why I say specialty channels is, to me, it's such a commitment to do something that you love. And then to take on all the other extra baggage that comes with making a YouTube channel. And a lot that never have done any videography in their life, never edited it before, don't know how to time with music. And do all these things and learn how to use copyright music and learn how to use Adobe Premiere, or whichever software, and learn how to shoot from different angles and make it engaging and learn how to vlog. And I mean, that's so much more than what most people do with their hobbies. Yeah. So my hats are always off to you guys. I went into this because I do this. This is the part that I enjoy. But you guys all had other stuff that, you know, this was supposed to be like a secondary thing, which quickly becomes the primary thing because it's more work. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, it becomes a, a center of our conversations, really. Yes. Not at the same level almost as, you know, the little one. It's like, what did you eat? You know, did yeah. he poop? And then so about this video. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so true. Or you get talking to people. I realize that even on the phone or something like that, I start sounding like I'm giving like a review to their YouTube channel. <laughs> Oh yeah, mom, you're straight. You're really doing a great job, and I see. I hope you keep it up. And you know, like I'll catch myself. Like I'm not reviewing right now. Get out of that mode. Like <laughs> it just comes naturally, you know. <laughs> that's true. You know, it's just yes. It's yes. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, thumbs up, mom. You take care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smiley face. Smiley face. Thumbs up. Forty five. <laughs> <laughs> I become their own algorithm. That's what I become the walking embodiment of it. Oh, and it's crazy because, like, for example, in social media, and you know that as well, it's such a different way of, uh, uh, you know, lingo, yeah, yeah, engaging in Instagram versus Twitter and, and YouTube, for example. So when I find myself not going on, on Instagram for a couple of days and then coming back from YouTube, and it's like, I can't comment, you know, yeah. I like this. This is so good. <laughs> like, it's, it doesn't make sense. But I, you can't use the same language. You got to use different way of commenting. And it's mm -hmm. so Sometimes you wear weird. many hats, many, uh, many hats into this yeah. game. So. But it's exciting at the same time, you know. Uh, it can't be one without the other. So I wouldn't trade <laughs> any of it because I got to meet so many great people like you guys. I wouldn't trade a single thing of it. This has been the greatest pinnacle of all of it is how many people we've got to meet that are so creative, so dedicated, so intelligent. It, I wouldn't trade a single thing for it. It's a new page of your history. That's right. And yours 100%. Too. <laughs> <laughs> like us tonight and everybody in the chat that watched you guys it will always be another level when we watch your videos now because we know you better even mm -hmm. though we've gotten to know each other already it's that next level and i love that i really do definitely right. yes you can yes it's, it gets to a completely different level that's exactly what you're saying yes it's good. That's a good thing. That means we'll know each other for years. I do believe that. You know, that's what makes long time followers, you know, is that bond. So I hope when, if ever your travels come back to Montreal or Quebec City, uh, that you get in touch with us. Yes. I'd uh, love to get in touch with in real life too. That would be so cool. Or in France. That's yeah. also a good idea. <laughs> Or in Portugal and Spain, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. We can do a drive with all the kids. That should be fun. We'll all be in. There you go. Let's do it together. Oh, yes. That would be awesome. See? That would be great. <laughs> can we win the lottery first so we can hire drivers or something? No, it's all cheap in Portugal and Spain. Don't worry about that. No, I, no, I just meant so we don't have to drive. All <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> we'll a party bus. We'll bring something North American over and discuss the locals. Yeah, we can hire a coach bus. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> we'll get off the bus and tell them how we can get everything better and cheaper back in North America so they love us forever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That doesn't that drive you crazy when you see people do that? Mm. And I see that in Europe. It drives me crazy. I'll see the tourists. They'll be like, well, back in, I don't know, I'm just thinking a place in uh, Philadelphia. We got bigger restaurants than this, and we get all this and that. Well, then stay there and don't go anywhere. You know, this is not the point of traveling. You're supposed to do different from what you do away from home. You just spent $2,000 to say, I wish I was back there eating a hoagie. You know, like God Almighty, get out of here! It's so I could shake them when I hear them talking like that's hoagie, big sandwich. <laughs> you know what a hoagie was, right? No. <laughs> that's there's sub, there's hero, and there's hoagies, and I think Philadelphia's hoagies, if I'm not mistaken. It's been a long time. Oh, I've been deployed to <laughs> there. No, I feel like the. <laughs> Nobody knows what you're talking about. Finally, finally, it's not just me. Finally, nobody knows what you're talking about. Uh, you have your own language, you know, it's not Latvian, but it is. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, 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 got you this time. It's a hoagie. Uh, no, 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 dreaming in colors. No, the worst yeah. part was I was about to say if you ever watched an old Bill Cosby show, but I don't know if I want to reference him anymore, so maybe I'll just leave it alone now. Yeah. Because no, he had no. all I, these. I don't think we want to tag him. In this. Oh my goodness. So, anyways, uh, thanks a lot. Erwin Good to see all of my back. Erwin the paid tourist, by the way, is going to drive the bus. If we go, yeah. There we go. Yeah, there so we, we go. have everybody. Oh, have a driver. We're all set. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> a field trip of YouTubers along the coast. Of <laughs> oh, we got to bring, we'll have to bring bottle caps. He'll make it all happy. <laughs> Imagine that. I don't like this. <laughs> this so is too amazing. far. I don't want to do this anymore. I can just hear them right now. This would be so amazing. Imagine yeah. a field trip with YouTubers. Oh. You know, that would be an awesome life. Like, it would be. If we win the lottery, I'm making a pack. I'm taking his all and we're going somewhere. <laughs> okay, that's a deal. We're signing on this. <laughs> that's right. That I will that's I will stand true. by. Will that's do. great. <laughs> And then she can come up sometime to Montreal because then she can teach everybody here how to speak real French. Yeah, that's, that's true. right. <laughs> Not what they speak here in Quebec. Because <laughs> it's easier to understand Prisian. I still swear by that. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Here it's a lot more slang and a lot more choppier. It's, it's not the fluid movie loving smooth. It's, but then again, I suppose it's like England versus North America. They invent their but, words. Yeah. And yeah, it's very, uh, you know, it's, like, it's not romantically, no, no. like, you know, like yeah. French language always sounds so romantic and, and beautiful, yeah. but not here. It's very, uh, <laughs> it's very choppy. Arabic type. Yeah. It's very <laughs> choppy, yeah. yeah, the way they're pronouncing And then you go to New Brunswick, which of course has Acadians like Louisiana, but they take it to a whole new level because they speak English and French all at the same time. Oh, wow. And if you ever want a migraine, just listen to one of them talk for five minutes, and you'll get one trying to translate. You'll love this one. You can appreciate this. My people don't speak French, won't understand it. I was with a truck driver, and they were on Channel 17, and that's where they're talking to locals. And one guy wanted to buy a truck from the other guy. It took me 10 years, I think, to say this properly at the speed they say it. Say, come on, could pull a truck. Oh, say, cat's on $25. Also, say, on bun price. And that's the way they talk. All day, every day, morning till night, like that. That's pure Franklish. <laughs> yep, as true as it can be. They're the perfect bilingual person, I guess, if you <laughs> want to call it that. Yeah, cat selling twenty five dollars like that. You can't combine anymore if you try. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> mental gymnastic is. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I've lost. Like I, I forget that I speak either language when I'm talking to them. Like, go, I go limp and wait for it to be over. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're they're definitely bridging both languages. I give them credit for that. So we better let these poor folks go. Yeah, they got a little one there and everything. The time and so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I just see so that. Long. We we get to, we tend to get, get caught into these and then we yes. forget about time. <laughs> sorry uh, about so that. Sorry about that. But we were so happy to have you on and enjoying your stories mm. and hiking and plans for the future. Uh, thank you so much for being on our stream today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, just 
I think we should do that more often. <laughs> yes, we are up for yes, that. So definitely, definitely, we'll have to do this again for sure. An <laughs> idea been popping around in my head the last couple of days was maybe bringing back some of our guests at a time and maybe do a panel with three or four, yeah. but like from different genres, yeah, and just kind of all to like kind of you know what I mean, like instead of. Because at first I thought maybe like all hiking and then all car stuff, but then I thought it'd be funner to actually mix people up a bit, mm. you know? Because uh, I yeah, mean, that, uh, something to try out. Definitely looking forward to that. Because I, I think that could work. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Thank Guys, you so you're much. unbelievable channel. You're an unbelievable supporter. We're so proud to be connected with a channel like yours, uh, and we can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for you know being such amazing people and it's we just love watching you guys <laughs> you know it's it's it feels like it's the most social event we've had since we saw eric uh from life adventures with eric and melissa in vegas yeah <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you guys are so kind <laughs> you guys are well like i say you guys make the channel so we can't thank you enough for helping us become what we've created here so Thank you so much. Have Thank a great you. night. Safe travels, guys. Looking forward to the next video. Say a big hi, little guy, for us. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds very right. good. Take All care, right. guys. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much for your time. Have a great night. <laughs> Bye you now. too. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. They're so sweet, the two of them. Yeah, it yeah. was so amazing. Yeah. So so nice and the little guy's so cute oh yeah yeah God. no he has he, he does like little man like he looks like yes. a, you know he's got that like old kind of farmer way to him. he's like very thoughtful and stuff like yeah, that yeah, yeah. no no he's a bright little guy oh. oh i love them i was so looking forward to have them on and, and it was amazing it was so nice thank you guys again panic really deep videos fun. no apologies necessary thank you so much for tuning in and keeping in while you were doing your editing i hope it's all going well and looking forward to it yeah uh, life first as we always yeah. say so don't uh, don't panic <laughs> Unintended, haha, -ha, so cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna acknowledge it, but sure. <laughs> uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, you are yeah. so amazing once again. Thank you for all the compliments. Uh, would love to be on that tree house right now with a nice cup of warm tea <laughs> and a blanket. <laughs> exactly, always pictures of it. I guess that's a, I don't say, I think that's a woman thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm mentally, <laughs> I'm mentally transforming myself right there, right now. So. That's right. <laughs> Wait for my mental mental part of my uh essence you know like panic panic the videos would say there, I, there. I will be visit, visiting you no, don't panic you wrote <laughs> that was like a t-shirt that's right that's right oh within hiking distance uh same here thank you so much that was so much fun such a great talk uh that's just as good as it gets all the time yeah we that's yeah. why we love it so much yeah this is so amazing just to have it's so it's you know it's like having conversation in our yep. living room and we hope that it's the same for you guys uh and that's why we have some people that say like oh i want to be on but i'm nervous and stuff like that they're a great example tonight you know they're a little bit of jitters it's normal we get them too when we we even get it still when we went on the uh, yeah, halos yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. such a weird feeling being on the other side and stuff <laughs> like that you know but uh, and not that they were great. I mean, it was a fantastic oh my podcast. Yeah, I couldn't ask for better, uh, you know, hosting. Yes, thank you. But uh, after a couple of minutes, once you get talking and stuff like that, it, it, you forget, and it's just like the chat's always there. We never forget you guys. But for them talking and that, they get into it, and then they're they, they just kind of lose themselves in the conversation. Yeah. You know? So. Thank you. There, you got an invitation to the treehouse. Perfect. So mm -hmm. my mental essence is going to be visiting you tonight. I, I can picture the treehouse in a blanket and a, and a, and a tea. <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh, within uh, hiking distance, there have been amazing comments. Uh, you uh, go through um, always the greatest comments about your editing and you guys as as a family in general so uh, i hope you guys can grow your channel so you can get noticed more oh yeah because um, you definitely deserve it that, um, for sure <clears throat> i can't think of a channel that doesn't frequent here that i wouldn't recommend somebody else to 
I really can't. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. one thing. That's why I say a cream of the crop, and I, I'll say it bragging. I don't care whose nerves it gets on the ear over and over, because I'm. that's what I'm proud of. These are good. And it was nice tonight to have so many new ones they brought in here, you know, like. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the just a, a, so, and... such an amazing part of it uh, within Hiking Distance. Uh, and thank you so much for bringing uh, your uh, hike community with you tonight. It was great to get in uh, touch and hopefully stay in touch with so much amazing channels. Yep. I, I checked some of them out and we'll get back to them again afterwards. Uh, it's always great to expand the horizon, so to say. So thank you so much. You really have an amazing hiking community. Uh, so. Um, thank you. Panic, you spelt it perfectly. No, you got it right, and we'd love to be on. What... Yeah, I'm a little, I, uh, not a little, I'm a lot, actually, uh, um, not stressed, but anxious about that one. Although I want to do it, but, uh, and I asked myself about, uh, about uh, being the, the essential one. I can't even talk. Oh, anyway, I can't. I won't be able to talk about that with him in the same room. So oh my god! I'm, I'm just saying, uh, it's not going to happen that way. So we'll have to figure out. Something. What was it the night? Ooh, Google scared. Was it Google? It was. I'll have to go back and watch what I think it was Google. No, I was actually looking uh, there for a previous video, and I was talking about my essential experiences with with different things, okay. intuition and things like that. I would like to talk about. But uh, this is what I get uh, very basic. <laughs> that's so that's why I have to go on panic the uh, live stream to talk about it because I can't talk about it at home. <laughs> I can't share. You want to share? They don't say. <laughs> Pineapple. White flag. Anything. <laughs> Doug, Joe's my dog at panic videos. I thought you were talking about having ghosts on your live stream. <laughs> Yeah, wait until we start having ghosts on. Oh <laughs> my! Still need to figure that out. <laughs> 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 we want you guys on. Yeah, we are not turning into ghosts just yet. So, <laughs> Doug, that was amazing. Oh, oh and Stephanie, thank you so much again for a compliment. Yeah. Oh my God, you guys are crazy. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness yeah you guys are fantastic thank you so much for sticking around today yeah. uh, we are back tomorrow at 8 p.m eastern um as every day except for sundays we are here with live with pusha yeah uh from monday to saturday at 8 p.m eastern and um yeah exactly uh, yeah. come back and don't forget to leave a comment afterwards when the video is up uh leave some love for our guests um definitely uh yeah and we always love to see you thank you guys so much thank you for sharing your quality time with us tonight cheers and keep creating love you all take care guys love have a good bye. one bye now <laughs>